He allowed four runs and seven hits over six innings last Sunday. He fell to 2-5 and five with a 5.19 ERA and eight career starts against the Yankees, although he did beat them in the clinching Game 4 of last year's ALDS. With talks swirling that the struggling Mike Messina could be pitching for his rotation spot Monday night against the Tigers, the right-hander said he does not feel the pressure. Who would they replace me with, Messina asked prior to last night's game. The Tigers sold 44,163 tickets, and about half of those fans appeared to wait out the four-plus hour delay. The spirited crowd booed when it was announced that the post-game fireworks show was canceled because of the condition of the field and Detroit's noise order. The Yankees and Tigers square off in Game 2 of this four-game series, and hopefully they start on time tonight. On the mound, it's Wong and Bonderman. Game time set for 7.05 p.m. in Detroit. You can see it live on MLB.TV beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. After a wild game that lasted even longer than the four-hour rain delay that preceded it, the Detroit Tigers and New York Yankees meet again tonight in Game 2 of a four-game series in Detroit. Chin Ming Wong and Jeremy Bonderman meet in a rematch from last Sunday. First pitch set for 7.05 p.m. from Comerica Park. Fly ball in the air, left field, way back, Matsui Barrett, game over! Game over! What a way to end a crazy night. The game didn't begin until 11.05 p.m. Eastern, and Guillen's shot came at 3.30 in the morning as Lionel Richie's all night long glared throughout Comerica Park after the 9 6 win. The score had remained tied at six from the fifth inning on as the Tigers got most of their early offense from Curtis Granderson. In a four for six night, he had RBI triples in back-to-back -back innings. The Yankees have now lost six of their last ten. Roger Clemens allowed six runs in five innings to see his ERA rise to 4.34. After he hit the showers, however, the Yanks got great work from their bullpen. Edouard Ramirez, Jabba Chamberlain, Kyle Farnsworth, and Luis Vizcaino combined to pitch four innings of scoreless relief. With the heartbreaking loss, the Yankees now trail the Red Sox by six and a half games in the AL East, and the Mariners by three games for the AL Wild Card. Kim Ming Wong will be facing the Tigers for the second time in less than a week. He improved to 4-0 with a 2.90 ERA and five starts against Detroit after a 9-3 home victory on Sunday. Wong is looking for his 15th win of the season. Jeremy Bonderman matches up with Wong for the second straight start after he allowed four runs and seven hits over six innings last Sunday. He fell to 2-5 with a 5.19 ERA and eight career starts against the Yankees, although he did beat them in the clinching Game 4 of last year's ALDS. With talks swirling that the struggling Mike Messina could be pitching for his rotation spot Monday night against the Tigers, the right-hander said he does not feel the pressure. Who would they replace me with, Messina asked prior to last night's game. The Tigers sold 44,163 tickets, and about half of those fans appeared to wait out the four-plus hour delay. The spirited crowd booed when it was announced that the post-game fireworks show was canceled because of the condition of the field and Detroit's noise order. The Yankees and Tigers square off in Game 2 of this four-game series, and hopefully they start on time tonight. On the mound, it's Wong and Bonderman. Game time set for 7.05 p.m. in Detroit. You can see it live on MLB.TV beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. After a wild game that lasted even longer than the four-hour rain delay that preceded it, the Detroit Tigers and New York Yankees meet again tonight in Game 2 of a four-game series in Detroit. Chin Ming Wong and Jeremy Bonderman meet in a rematch from last Sunday. First pitch set for 7.05 p.m. from Comerica Park. Fly ball in the air, left field, way back, Matsui Barrett, game over! Game over! What a way to end a crazy night. The game didn't begin until 11.05 p.m. Eastern, and Guillen's shot came at 3.30 in the morning as Lionel Richie's all night long glared throughout Comerica Park after the 9-6 win. The score had remained tied at six from the fifth inning on as the Tigers got most of their early offense from Curtis Granderson. In a four for six night, he had RBI triples in back-to-back -back innings. 
The Yankees have now lost six of their last ten. Roger Clemens allowed six runs in five innings to see his ERA rise to 4.34. After he hit the showers, however, the Yanks got great work from their bullpen. Edouard Ramirez, Jabba Chamberlain, Kyle Farnsworth, and Luis Vizcaino combined to pitch four innings of scoreless relief. With the heartbreaking loss, the Yankees now trail the Red Sox by six and a half games in the AL East, and the Mariners by three games for the AL Wild Card. Kim Ming Wong will be facing the Tigers for the second time in less than a week. He improved to 4-0 with a 2.90 ERA and five starts against Detroit after a 9-3 home victory on Sunday. Wong is looking for his 15th win of the season. Jeremy Bonderman matches up with Wong for the second straight start after he allowed four runs and seven hits over six innings last Sunday. He fell to 2-5 with a 5.19 ERA and eight career starts against the Yankees, although he did beat them in the clinching Game 4 of last year's ALDS. With talks swirling that the struggling Mike Messina could be pitching for his rotation spot Monday night against the Tigers, the right-hander said he does not feel the pressure. Who would they replace me with, Messina asked prior to last night's game. The Tigers sold 44,163 tickets, and about half of those fans appeared to wait out the four-plus hour delay. The spirited crowd booed when it was announced that the post-game fireworks show was canceled because of the condition of the field and Detroit's noise order. The Yankees and Tigers square off in Game 2 of this four-game series, and hopefully they start on time tonight. On the mound, it's Wong and Bonderman. Game time set for 7.05 p.m. in Detroit. You can see it live on MLB.TV beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. After a wild game that lasted even longer than the four-hour rain delay that preceded it, the Detroit Tigers and New York Yankees meet again tonight in Game 2 of a four-game series in Detroit. Chen Ming Wang and Jeremy Bonder meet in a rematch from last Sunday. First pitch set for 7.05 p.m. from Comerica Park. Fly ball in the air, left field, way back, Matsui Barrett. Game over! Game over! What a way to end a crazy night. The game didn't begin until 11.05 p.m. Eastern, and Guillen's shot came at 3.30 in the morning as Lionel Richie's all night long glared throughout Comerica Park at the 9 6 win. The score had remained tied at six from the fifth inning on as the Tigers got most of their early offense from Curtis Granderson. In a four for six night, he had RBI triples in back-to-back -back innings. The Yankees have now lost six of their last ten. Roger Clemens allowed six runs in five innings to see his ERA rise to 4.34. After he hit the showers, however, the Yanks got great work from their bullpen. Edouard Ramirez, Jabba Chamberlain, Kyle Farnsworth, and Luis Vizcaino combined to pitch four innings of scoreless relief. With the heartbreaking loss, the Yankees now trail the Red Sox by six and a half games in the AL East, and the Mariners by three games for the AL Wild Card. Kim Ming Wong will be facing the Tigers for the second time in less than a week. He improved to 4-0 with a 2.90 ERA and five starts against Detroit after a 9-3 home victory on Sunday. Wong is looking for his 15th win of the season. Jeremy Bonderman matches up with Wong for the second straight start after he allowed four runs and seven hits over six innings last Sunday. He fell to 2-5 with a 5.19 ERA and eight career starts against the Yankees, although he did beat them in the clinching Game 4 of last year's ALDS. With talks swirling that the struggling Mike Messina could be pitching for his rotation spot Monday night against the Tigers, the right-hander said he does not feel the pressure. Who would they replace me with, Messina asked prior to last night's game. The Tigers sold 44,163 tickets, and about half of those fans appeared to wait out the four-plus hour delay. The spirited crowd booed when it was announced that the post-game fireworks show was canceled because of the condition of the field and Detroit's noise order. The Yankees and Tigers square off in Game 2 of this four-game series, and hopefully they start on time tonight. On the mound, it's Wong and Bonderman. Game time set for 7.05 p.m. in Detroit. You can see it live on MLB.TV beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> After a wild game that lasted even longer than the four-hour rain delay that preceded it, the Detroit Tigers and New York Yankees meet again tonight in Game 2 of a four-game series in Detroit. 
Chen Ming Wang and Jeremy Bondarin meet in a rematch from last Sunday. First pitch set for 7.05 p.m. from Comerica Park. until 11.05 p.m. Eastern, and Ian's shot came at 3.30 in the morning as Lionel Richie's all-night-long glared throughout Comerica Park after the 9-6 win. The score had remained tied at 6 from the 5th inning on as the Tigers got most of their early offense from Curtis Granderson. In a 4-for-6 night, he had RBI triples in back-to-back -back innings. The Yankees have now lost six of their last ten. Roger Clemens allowed six runs in five innings to see his ERA rise to 4.34. After he hit the showers, however, the Yanks got great work from their bullpen. Edouard Ramirez, Jabba Chamberlain, Kyle Farnsworth, and Luis Vizcaino combined to pitch four innings of scoreless relief. With the heartbreaking loss, the Yankees now trail the Red Sox by six and a half games in the AL East, and the Mariners by three games for the AL Wild Card. Kim Ming Wong will be facing the Tigers for the second time in less than a week. He improved to 4-0 with a 2.90 ERA and five starts against Detroit after a 9-3 home victory on Sunday. Wong is looking for his 15th win of the season. Jeremy Bonderman matches up with Wong for the second straight start after he allowed four runs and seven hits over six innings last Sunday. He fell to 2-5 and five with a 5.19 ERA and eight career starts against the Yankees, although he did beat them in the clinching Game 4 of last year's ALDS. With talk swirling that the struggling Mike Messina could be pitching for his rotation spot Monday night against the Tigers, the right-hander said he does not feel the pressure. Who would they replace me with, Messina asked prior to last night's game. The Tigers sold 44,163 tickets, and about half of those fans appeared to wait out the four-plus hour delay. The spirited crowd booed when it was announced that the post-game fireworks show was canceled because of the condition of the field and Detroit's noise order. The Yankees and Tigers swear off in Game 2 of this four-game series, and hopefully they start on time tonight. On the mound, it's Wong and Bonderman. Game time set for 7.05 p.m. in Detroit. You can see it live on MLB.TV beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. After a wild game that lasted even longer than the four-hour rain delay that preceded it, the Detroit Tigers and New York Yankees meet again tonight in Game 2 of a four-game series in Detroit. Chen Ming Wang and Jeremy Bondarin meet in a rematch from last Sunday. First pitch set for 7.05 p.m. from Comerica Park. Fly ball in the air, left field, way back, Matsui back, game over! Game over! What a way to end a crazy night. The game didn't begin until 11.05 p.m. Eastern, and Ian's shot came at 3.30 in the morning as Lionel Richie's all-night-long glared throughout Comerica Park after the 9-6 win. The score had remained tied at six from the fifth inning on as the Tigers got most of their early offense from Curtis Granderson. In a four for six night, he had RBI triples in back-to-back -back innings. The Yankees have now lost six of their last ten. Roger Clemens allowed six runs in five innings to see his ERA rise to 4.34. After he hit the showers, however, the Yanks got great work from their bullpen. Edouard Ramirez, Jabba Chamberlain, Kyle Farnsworth, and Luis Vizcaino combined to pitch four innings of scoreless relief. With the heartbreaking loss, the Yankees now trail the Red Sox by six and a half games in the AL East, and the Mariners by three games for the AL Wild Card. Kim Ming Wong will be facing the Tigers for the second time in less than a week. He improved to 4-0 with a 2.90 ERA and five starts against Detroit after a 9-3 home victory on Sunday. Wong is looking for his 15th win of the season. Jeremy Bonderman matches up with Wong for the second straight start after he allowed four runs and seven hits over six innings last Sunday. He fell to 2-5 and five with a 5.19 ERA and eight career starts against the Yankees, although he did beat them in the clinching Game 4 of last year's ALDS. With talk swirling that the struggling Mike Messina could be pitching for his rotation spot Monday night against the Tigers, the right-hander said he does not feel the pressure. Who would they replace me with, Messina asked prior to last night's game. The Tigers sold 44,163 tickets, and about half of those fans appeared to wait out the four-plus hour delay. 
The spirited crowd booed when it was announced that the post-game fireworks show was canceled because of the condition of the field and Detroit's noise artist. The Yankees and Tigers square off in Game 2 of this four-game series, and hopefully they start on time tonight. On the mound, it's Wong and Bonderman. Game time set for 7.05 p.m. in Detroit. You can see it live on MLB.tv beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. After a wild game that lasted even longer than the four-hour rain delay that preceded it, the Detroit Tigers and New York Yankees meet again tonight in Game 2 of a four-game series in Detroit. Chin Ming Wong and Jeremy Bonderman meet in a rematch from last Sunday. First pitch set for 7.05 p.m. from Comerica Park. What a way to end a crazy night. The game didn't begin until 11.05 p.m. Eastern, and Guillen's shot came at 3.30 in the morning as Lionel Richie's all-night-long glared throughout Comerica Park after the 9-6 win. The score had remained tied at 6 from the fifth inning on as the Tigers got most of their early offense from Curtis Granderson. In a 4-for-6 night, he had RBI triples in back-to-back -back innings. The Yankees have now lost six of their last ten. Roger Clemens allowed six runs in five innings to see his ERA rise to 4.34. After he hit the showers, however, the Yanks got great work from their bullpen. Edward Ramirez, Jabba Chamberlain, Kyle Farnsworth, and Luis Vizcaino combined to pitch four innings of scoreless relief. With the heartbreaking loss, the Yankees now trail the Red Sox by six and a half games in the AL East, and the Mariners by three games for the AL Wild Card. Kim Ming Wong will be facing the Tigers for the second time in less than a week. He improved to 4-0 with a 2.90 ERA and five starts against Detroit after a 9-3 home victory on Sunday. Wong is looking for his 15th win of the season. Jeremy Bonderman matches up with Wong for the second straight start after he allowed four runs and seven hits over six innings last Sunday. He fell to 2-5 with a 5.19 ERA and eight career starts against the Yankees, although he did beat them in the clinching Game 4 of last year's ALDS. With talks swirling that the struggling Mike Messina could be pitching for his rotation spot Monday night against the Tigers, the right-hander said he does not feel the pressure. Who would they replace me with, Messina asked prior to last night's game. The Tigers sold 44,163 tickets, and about half of those fans appeared to wait out the four-plus hour delay. The spirited crowd booed when it was announced that the post-game fireworks show was canceled because of the condition of the field and Detroit's noise artist. The Yankees and Tigers square off in Game 2 of this four-game series, and hopefully they start on time tonight. On the mound, it's Wong and Bonderman. Game time set for 7.05 p.m. in Detroit. You can see it live on MLB.tv beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. After a wild game that lasted even longer than the four-hour rain delay that preceded it, the Detroit Tigers and New York Yankees meet again tonight in Game 2 of a four-game series in Detroit. Chin Ming Wong and Jeremy Bonderman meet in a rematch from last Sunday. First pitch set for 7.05 p.m. from Comerica Park. Fly ball in the air, left field, way back, Matsui back, game over! Game over! What a way to end a crazy night. The game didn't begin until 11.05 p.m. Eastern, and Guillen's shot came at 3.30 in the morning as Lionel Richie's all-night-long glared throughout Comerica Park after the 9-6 win. The score had remained tied at 6 from the fifth inning on as the Tigers got most of their early offense from Curtis Granderson. In a 4-for-6 night, he had RBI triples in back-to-back -back innings. The Yankees have now lost six of their last ten. Roger Clemens allowed six runs in five innings to see his ERA rise to 4.34. After he hit the showers, however, the Yanks got great work from their bullpen. Edward Ramirez, Jabba Chamberlain, Kyle Farnsworth, and Luis Vizcaino combined to pitch four innings of scoreless relief. With the heartbreaking loss, the Yankees now trail the Red Sox by six and a half games in the AL East, and the Mariners by three games for the AL Wild Card. Jin Ming Wong will be facing the Tigers for the second time in less than a week. 
He improves to 4-0 with a 2.90 ERA and five starts against Detroit after a 9-3 home victory on Sunday. Wong is looking for his 15th win of the season. Jeremy Bonderman matches up with Wong for the second straight start after he allowed four runs and seven hits over six innings last Sunday. He fell to 2-5 and five with a 5.19 ERA and eight career starts against the Yankees, although he did beat them in the clinching Game 4 of last year's ALDS. With talks swirling that the struggling Mike Messina could be pitching for his rotation spot Monday night against the Tigers, the right-hander said he does not feel the pressure. Who would they replace me with, Messina asked prior to last night's game. The Tigers sold 44,163 tickets, and about half of those fans appeared to wait out the four-plus hour delay. The spirited crowd booed when it was announced that the post-game fireworks show was canceled because of the condition of the field and Detroit's noise artists. The Yankees and Tigers swear off in Game 2 of this four-game series, and hopefully they start on time tonight. On the mound, it's Wong and Bonderman. Game time set for 7.05 p.m. in Detroit. You can see it live on MLB.TV beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> After a wild game that lasted even longer than the four-hour rain delay that preceded it, the Detroit Tigers and New York Yankees meet again tonight in Game 2 of a four-game series in Detroit. Chin Ming Wong and Jeremy Bonderman meet in a rematch from last Sunday. First pitch set for 7.05 p.m. from Comerica Park. Fly ball in the air, left field, way back, Matsui back, game over! Game over! What a way to end a crazy night. The game didn't begin until 11.05 p.m. Eastern, and Ian's shot came at 3.30 in the morning as Lionel Richie's all night long glared throughout Comerica Park after the 9 6 win. The score had remained tied at six from the fifth inning on as the Tigers got most of their early offense from Curtis Granderson. In a four for six night, he had RBI triples in back-to-back -back innings. The Yankees have now lost six of their last ten. Roger Clemens allowed six runs in five innings to see his ERA rise to 4.34. After he hit the showers, however, the Yanks got great work from their bullpen. Edouard Ramirez, Jabba Chamberlain, Kyle Farnsworth, and Luis Vizcaino combined to pitch four innings of scoreless relief. With the heartbreaking loss, the Yankees now trail the Red Sox by six and a half games in the AL East, and the Mariners by three games for the AL Wild Card. Kim Ming Wong will be facing the Tigers for the second time in less than a week. He improved to 4-0 with a 2.90 ERA and five starts against Detroit after a 9-3 home victory on Sunday. Wong is looking for his 15th win of the season. Jeremy Bonderman matches up with Wong for the second straight start after he allowed four runs and seven hits over six innings last Sunday. He fell to 2-5 and five with a 5.19 ERA and eight career starts against the Yankees, although he did beat them in the clinching Game 4 of last year's ALDS. With talks swirling that the struggling Mike Messina could be pitching for his rotation spot Monday night against the Tigers, the right-hander said he does not feel the pressure. Who would they replace me with, Messina asked prior to last night's game. The Tigers sold 44,163 tickets, and about half of those fans appeared to wait out the four-plus hour delay. The spirited crowd booed when it was announced that the post-game fireworks show was canceled because of the condition of the field and Detroit's noise artists. The Yankees and Tigers swear off in Game 2 of this four-game series, and hopefully they start on time tonight. On the mound, it's Wong and Bonderman. Game time set for 7.05 p.m. in Detroit. You can see it live on MLB.TV beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> After a wild game that lasted even longer than the four-hour rain delay that preceded it, the Detroit Tigers and New York Yankees meet again tonight in Game 2 of a four-game series in Detroit. Chin Ming Wong and Jeremy Bonderman meet in a rematch from last Sunday. First pitch set for 7.05 p.m. from Comerica Park. Fly ball in the air, left field, way back, Matsui back, game over! Game over! What a way to end a crazy night. The game didn't begin until 11.05 p.m. Eastern, and Ian's shot came at 3.30 in the morning as Lionel Richie's all night long glared throughout Comerica Park after the 9-6 win. 
The score had remained tied at six from the fifth inning on as the Tigers got most of their early offense from Curtis Granderson. In a four for six night, he had RBI triples in back-to-back -back innings. The Yankees have now lost six of their last ten. Roger Clemens allowed six runs in five innings to see his ERA rise to 4.34. After he hit the showers, however, the Yanks got great work from their bullpen. Edouard Ramirez, Jabba Chamberlain, Kyle Farnsworth, and Luis Vizcaino combined to pitch four innings of scoreless relief. With the heartbreaking loss, the Yankees now trail the Red Sox by six and a half games in the AL East, and the Mariners by three games for the AL Wild Card. Kim Ming Wong will be facing the Tigers for the second time in less than a week. He improved to 4-0 with a 2.90 ERA and five starts against Detroit after a 9-3 home victory on Sunday. Wong is looking for his 15th win of the season. Jeremy Bonderman matches up with Wong for the second straight start after he allowed four runs and seven hits over six innings last Sunday. He fell to 2-5 and five with a 5.19 ERA and eight career starts against the Yankees, although he did beat them in the clinching Game 4 of last year's ALDS. With talks swirling that the struggling Mike Messina could be pitching for his rotation spot Monday night against the Tigers, the right-hander said he does not feel the pressure. Who would they replace me with, Messina asked prior to last night's game. The Tigers sold 44,163 tickets, and about half of those fans appeared to wait out the four-plus hour delay. The spirited crowd booed when it was announced that the post-game fireworks show was canceled because of the condition of the field and Detroit's noise artist. The Yankees and Tigers swear off in game two of this four-game series, and hopefully they start on time tonight. On the mound, it's Wong and Bonderman. Game time set for 7.05 p.m. in Detroit. You can see it live on MLB.TV beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern. After a wild game that lasted even longer than the four-hour rain delay that preceded it, the Detroit Tigers and New York Yankees meet again tonight in Game 2 of a four-game series in Detroit. Chin Ming Wong and Jeremy Bonderman meet in a rematch from last Sunday. First pitch set for 7.05 p.m. from Comerica Park. Fly ball in the air, left field, way back, Matsui Barrett, game over! Game over! What a way to end a crazy night. The game didn't begin until 11.05 p.m. Eastern, and Guillen's shot came at 3.30 in the morning as Lionel Richie's all night long glared throughout Comerica Park after the 9-6 win. The score had remained tied at six from the fifth inning on as the Tigers got most of their early offense from Curtis Granderson. In a four for six night, he had RBI triples in back-to-back -back innings. The Yankees have now lost six of their last ten. Roger Clemens allowed six runs in five innings to see his ERA rise to 4.34. After he hit the showers, however, the Yanks got great work from their bullpen. Edouard Ramirez, Jabba Chamberlain, Kyle Farnsworth, and Luis Vizcaino combined to pitch four innings of scoreless relief. With the heartbreaking loss, the Yankees now trail the Red Sox by six and a half games in the AL East, and the Mariners by three games for the AL Wild Card. Kim Ming Wong will be facing the Tigers for the second time in less than a week. He improved to 4-0 with a 2.90 ERA and five starts against Detroit after a 9-3 home victory on Sunday. Wong is looking for his 15th win of the season. Jeremy Bonderman matches up with Wong for the second straight start after he allowed four runs and seven hits over six innings last Sunday. He fell to 2-5 and five with a 5.19 ERA and eight career starts against the Yankees, although he did beat them in the clinching Game 4 of last year's ALDS. With talks swirling that the struggling Mike Messina could be pitching for his rotation spot Monday night against the Tigers, the right-hander said he does not feel the pressure. Who would they replace me with, Messina asked prior to last night's game. The Tigers sold 44,163 tickets, and about half of those fans appeared to wait out the four-plus hour delay. The spirited crowd booed when it was announced that the post-game fireworks show was canceled because of the condition of the field and Detroit's noise artist. The Yankees and Tigers swear off in game two of this four-game series, and hopefully they start on time tonight. On the mound, it's Wong and Bonderman. Game time set for 7.05 p.m. in Detroit. You can see it live on MLB.TV beginning at 7 p.m. Eastern.
after a wild game that lasted even longer than the four-hour rain delay that preceded it, the Detroit Tigers and New York Yankees meet again tonight in Game 2 of a four-game series in Detroit. Chen Ming Wang and Jeremy Bondarin meet in a rematch from last Sunday. First pitch set for 7.05 p.m. from Comerica Park. What a way to end a crazy night. The game didn't begin until 11.05 p.m. Eastern, and Guillen's shot came at 3.30 in the morning as Lionel Richie's all-night-long glared throughout Comerica Park after the 9-6 win. The score had remained tied at 6 from the fifth inning on. Early this morning, the Tigers and Yankees played a marathon game after Mother Nature decided to delay the start for over four hours. MVP candidate Maglio Ordonez gave the Tigers the lead, only to see his chief competition, Alex Rodriguez, hit a go-ahead home run. The back-and-forth game was deadlocked until the bottom of the 11th when Carlos Guillen hit a three-run homer at the stroke of 3.30 a.m. One and two on Guillen. Fly ball in the air, left field, way back, Matsui back. Tonight at Comerica Park, it's a beautiful, sunshiny evening. The weather is absolutely perfect. We have no delay to the start of tonight's game. Welcome to Comerica Park, game two in this four-game series between the Tigers and the New York Yankees. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba alongside Ron Allen. Glad to have you with us for game two of the series. Uh, first things first, let's welcome back my partner. Glad to see you back, Ron. I know you were feeling a little bit under the weather last night. Good to see you back on the broadcast. You missed a heck of a ball game, I'll tell you that much. The Tigers, though, had a trio of three players that really came through last night. When you start talking about Curtis Granders, and he was struggling a little bit, fighting himself uh, at the plate in the last couple of weeks, but he reverted back to what his college coach told him, just to have fun, go out and relax, and don't dwell on each at bat. And last night, he got busy. He had a whale of a game. A couple of triples, a double. He also had a single, and we know he always plays flawlessly defensively, but that was just a start. Magli Ordonez probably would finish second if the season ended today day as far as the MVP was concerned. A-Rod on the other side would get it, but sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. I want that last swing by Maglio. And Carlos Guillen, the only time he's ever hit a home run in 3.30 in the morning is when he used to dream about hitting a home run as a kid in the World Series like all of us did. But what a great win for the Tigers last night. You know, there were a lot of fans still sticking around at 3.30, and they were rewarded with that walk-off home run by Carlos Guillen. Hopefully we won't be here that long tonight. Maybe the Tigers have a snappy victory in their uh, pockets tonight because they'll certainly need it. They have pulled within a game and a half now of Cleveland of the American League Central Division, so a big win last night for the ball club. Another tough task, though, tonight with the Yankees in town. They've got Jeremy Bonderman on the hill. Jeremy is looking for his first win since July 13th. Maybe tonight is the night. It's the Tigers. It's the Yankees. And it's coming up next.
a beautiful night for baseball here in the Motor City. The Yankees are in town. Game two of this four game weekend set. And uh, the Tigers had to wait out a four hour rain delay last night in a ball game that took four hours, 24 minutes. But in the end, Detroit came away with the victory as they win game one in the series on the walk off home run by Carlos Guillen. And uh, hopefully, that will be a victory that propels this Tigers team now into a few victories in a row. Meanwhile, Joe Torre couldn't have been uh, real happy with the proceedings last night, waiting around all that time, and he comes away with a loss, but it's the way it goes. His team had some opportunities late in that ball game last night as well, but it was the Tigers that took advantage of theirs in the 11th inning. Here is the starting lineup in the ball game today for the visiting New York Yankees. It looks like this. Johnny Damon is their leadoff man. He's out in left field. Career against Bonderman. Really good numbers. Derek Cheater bats second and plays short. Bobby Abreu is in right field. Alex Rodriguez cleaning up, followed by Matsui, the DH. Posada will catch in their bottom three is Cano, Betamites, and Melky Cabrera in center field and the batting night. Gardner White pitching report tonight is on Jeremy Bonderman. Well, he needs to get out of the first inning. We've well documented the numbers of the faithful first inning this year for Bonderman, so we're not going to dwell on it too much. And he also needs to do a little bit better job against Johnny Damon, who is leading off for the Yankees. He is 12 for 28 against Jeremy. And how about a slump buster? Two and six in his last 11 games. His last win way back July 13th. First start after the All-Star game. Let's take a look at the Marathon defense presented to you by Marathon. I've already said that. Santiago's at shortstop. Second start at shortstop this season. 170th in his career. In the infield with him, you've got Inns, Polanco, and Guillen. You've got Bonderman on the mound. We told you that. Rebello behind the plate. And the, in the outfield is Tim's, Granderson, Ordonez. Well, for the Tigers, Carlos Guillen had the big hit in the ball game last night. And uh, Mr. Guillen is stationed out at first base this evening. And uh, we had a scoring change, by the way, in last night's ball game. Uh, there was a play early on, in fact, in the very first inning that they charged Placido Polanco with an error on. It didn't look like a big deal, but of course, a big streak came to an end on this play. Polanco's throw pulling the first baseman Marcus Thames off the back. They charged Polanco with an error on that play, which brought to an end his streak of 147 consecutive errorless games. But guess what? They've changed it. They have given the air to Marcus Thames, and so Polanco's streak is still intact. And uh, Marcus is patrolling left tonight. So uh, he was involved in that play at first base. They moved him around quite a bit. He has been very versatile this year for the Tigers. He's handled himself very well since coming back from that hamstring injury. I'm talking about Marcus Tins. Well, here we go. It'll be Johnny Damon to lead things off. Damon, then Jeter, and Bobby Abreu on an absolutely gorgeous night. It is 73 degrees at game time. And the first pitch, strike one on Johnny Damon. Here is Bonderman's 0-1 delivery. Missed it outside, and the count evens up now at 1-1. One one. After getting an outstanding pitching performance from Nate Robertson a couple of days ago, they need Bonderman to go out and pitch the way that he is capable of pitching and win this ball game. Uh, he and Verlander both need to get on track. Swing and a miss. Looks like an off-speed pitch there. That bounces in, and the count now goes to two balls, two strikes. A couple of hits in the ball game last night in his first two at bats for Damon. But then he struck out three consecutive at bats before they lifted him. Two and two on the Yankees' leadoff man. And way high with a fastball, three balls, two strikes. Bonderman facing Damon Jeter and Abreu in the first inning. There's Derek Jeter, the captain, waiting on deck and back in the two slot in the lineup tonight. That slap foul back out of play. Three and two on Johnny Damon. Only seven home runs this year, which is well below his career high. And it's popped up. Foul ground, third base side. Brandon Inge is waiting for the out. You know, you bring up a great point about Damon's home runs, but home runs around the major leagues this year are down. And they have just taken care of Damon.
We are at Comerica Park in downtown Detroit for game two in this four game series between the Tigers and the Yankees. Mario and Pemba, Rod Allen, glad to have you with us and glad to have our viewers in the Toledo area and here in the Motor City and Fox 2 in Detroit after the Red Sox victory over the White Sox today. Welcome to the ballpark just underway in a scoreless game and Derek Jeter is standing in. Jeter with one out batting 323. Eight home runs this season was hitless last night but he scored a couple of times. Checked his swing and his foul back out of play. You got to believe Rod that Bonderman is aching right now just for a one two three first inning. Absolutely. It's been so long since he's had one and you know it's between the ears the fact that when he does go out there he gives up a lot of runs. Thirty five of his eighty eight runs given up this year have come in the first inning. That stat is astounding. Got him to chase one and two. Good slider from Bonderman. He looks more relaxed out there to me. You brought it up a couple of pitches ago and you said that looked like a changeup, but he just looks like he's so free and easy out there and just allowing his natural stuff to take over versus thinking about what he has done in the past in the first inning. And that can be tough to do against the lineup that the Yankees will throw out at you, but he certainly looks good tonight. Little chopper hit back up the middle. Santiago scoops and throws him out by half a step. Boy, Jeter really gets down the line. And yeah, Jeter plays the game the right way, like a lot of guys do at this level. Yeah, but he is a wonderful example for the New York Yankees younger players. He's always hustling. And we know Ramon Santiago doesn't miss anything at shortstop. Did not make one error last year in a Tigers uniform. Santiago knew he had to get rid of it, and boy, he just nipped him by half a step. Nice play by Ramon. Two gone, and now Bobby Abreu will stand in. There's strike one on Abreu. Take one more look at this play by Santiago. Take a look at his right hand. He knows this is how you feel the ground ball, but also he knows Jeter's running, so he has to have that throwing hand down there close to the glove, so he takes very little time in getting the ball in the throwing hand back to first base. And that was the difference, obviously, in that play. Absolutely. If his hand is any higher, then he doesn't get there. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Abreu looks at a slider strike. One and two now on the number three hitter for the Yankees. Bonderman has gone to uh, a lot of his secondary pitches here in the first inning to change up the slider versus trying to establish his fastball in the first inning, which is what most starting pitchers do that throw 95 miles an hour. Rebello wants the fastball in. Here it is. And it's popped up foul. And Bello getting the start behind the plate today for Pudge Rodriguez. And uh, with the day game tomorrow, uh, you'll see, I'm sure, Pudge back in there. He's not happy today. One and two. One two pitch. Pulled into right field, a base hit. So Abreu is aboard with a two out single. They've had a tough time getting Abreu out, especially in that series in New York. Uh, he was a one man wrecking crew. Remember earlier this season when all Yankees fans were really upset that they let Sheffield go and Abreu was having a poor first half of the year? They were screaming, We let the wrong guy go. Exactly. But Abreu has since come on and had a terrific second half. They still may have let the wrong guy go though. You know, obviously I'm a little biased but uh, I really enjoy watching Gary Sheffield play. A Rod looks at a ball one and oh no knock on Bobby Abreu he's an outstanding player and person. Alex Rodriguez hitting 308. Recently crossed the 500 plateau in home runs hit at the tender age of 32. He is some kind of player. Gifted, talented. But boy, when the Tigers last saw him in the postseason last year, he was batting in the bottom third of their lineup. Really struggled in the postseason. There's a strike right down the middle, one and one. There you go, 507 lifetime home runs now, and that's good for 21st on the all-time list, and that's just a list that he will continue to climb 
Well, year after year. If you were a general manager and you were starting a team tomorrow, he would be your first pick. Abreu does run, so you got to keep him close from time to time. He has 17 steals, but if he does run, that opens up first base to do with Alex Rodriguez what you want to do with him, but with Matsui in that on deck circle, my guess is Bonderman would still have to pitch to him. Slide step and it's grounded foul. That's really where you have to pitch Alex. Uh, you've got to crowd him and you can't be afraid to go inside with good fastballs and Bonderman has a good fastball 92 to 95 miles an hour. When you throw balls up and out over the plate Alex will do with it what he did with that one last night that he got from Miller. So Jeremy is ahead of the count. I think the Tigers realize that the Yankees probably tonight will try and run. As much as they can against Bonderman and uh, Jeremy employed the slide step on that last pitch. They did that to him in New York. Let's see what he does here. Time called as A-Rod steps out. He can kind of negate the running game to a certain degree. If he does what he just did there. Hold the baseball step off. The slide step. Vary his times when he delivers the ball to Rebello. Just to get the first base runners timing off. He chases Abreu back once again. Two out single by Bobby Abreu. We are just underway. The Tigers won the opening game of the series earlier this morning. 3.30. 11th inning. Time did you get up today? <laughs> what time did I get out of bed or what time did I get up? <laughs> They're two different things. I was awakened oh, probably around 8 this morning. It's Saturday. No, bank, no baseball <laughs> games or nothing today? No. No, but uh, you got lucky. There's a dog in the house and all kinds of other stuff going on. They could care less what type you got oh, yeah. on last night. <laughs> he got that right. One and two. There goes the runner. Inside and high. The throw not in time. Good throw, though. Accurate throw by Rebello, but a good jump by Abreu, and he swipes his 18th. Well, Bonnerman did the best job that he could possibly do to hold him close. And you talked about Rebello. Rebello took his time. Even though Abreu had an outstanding jump, he still took his time and made a very strong throw down to second. A lot of times the catcher, when they see the base runner get a good jump, they rush their throw, and that's when they throw the ball off toward the second base side of the bag. Well, the Yankees now put a man in scoring position, two and two on Alex Rodriguez. He wouldn't chase that slider. That was a pretty good pitch. He had a pretty good location, but A-Rod disciplined enough to stay off. You gotta be careful when you pitch against the hitters like the Yankees have. They're just such outstanding hitters that when they get themselves in fastball counts, very seldom do they look for fastballs. They look for breaking balls because that's what most pitchers do to them. Same pitch, and with first base open, you know Bonderman wasn't going to challenge A Rod there, give him anything too good to hit. That'll put. Rodriguez at first and now Hideki Matsui. We're talking to Jim Leland today about a situation last night where there was a stolen base with A-Rod at the plate and the Tigers decided to not to walk Alex Rodriguez with first base open. And uh, the reasoning for Jim Leland was well you've got Posada and you've got Matsui a couple of big left handed hitters. Mm -hmm. you know, on deck and sometimes you just have to uh, roll the dice and pick your poison. How'd it work out? They got out of the inning. Here's Matsui slapping one toward left field. Thames on the run. Still going. Not going to get there. This one might get two runs in. It will. A-Rod rounding third. He will come around to score. And a two-out, two-run double by Matsui. Not so much the fact that Bobby Abreu got a base hit with two outs, but the two pitches that he threw to A-Rod there are probably the two pitches in question. Probably should have went right after Alex instead of walking him. Well, Matsui picks up RBI's 89 and 90. A little two seam fastball that ran right in the barrel of Matsui. He laced that ball to left field. Tim's had no chance. This is bordering on bizarre now in these first inning woes for Bonderman. He got the first two batters quite easily and then was ahead of Abreu. And all of a sudden it's 2 nothing Yankees. So the Tigers offense behind early again here tonight. 0 and 1 is the count on Jorge Posada.
Posada's hit safely in his last three. He's been swinging a hot bat. Ten for his last 25. And uh, very quietly, he is fifth in the American League with that 335 average. He picked a uh, the right year to go off statistically. And he is a free agent after the season. It's always good to pile up those numbers in your free agent year. Little tapper hit slowly to first base, scooped up there by Guillen. He'll tag the back for the out and another first inning that Bonderman would soon forget. Two nothing Yankees lead at the end of one half. First inning tonight. Tigers offense has some work to do. The starting lineup presented by Art Van Furniture. Curtis Granderson finally busting out of a little bit of a slump last night with four big hits, including a couple of triples. He's in center field, and Polanco and Thames. Ordonez, Guillen, and Rabello are in the middle of the Tigers lineup tonight. And then Casey Inge and Santiago, your bottom three. As we scope out the pitching report on Chin Ming Wong. He's got about three or four different pitches, but he's using his sinker ball more, which bodes well for him. He gets a lot of ground balls. He had a tough time keeping his concentration last Sunday against Detroit, allowed a couple of steals. He also balked, but he has also dominated Detroit to the tune of a 4 0 record and a 2.90 earned run average. Let's take a look at the defense behind Mr. Wong today. You've got Damon Cabrera Abreu in the outfield. Rodriguez, career 590th game at third base. He played over 1,200 at shortstop. You've got Jeter in the infield with him on the left side. Cano Betamint on the right. Wong on the mound. And Posada behind the dish today. So Curtis Granderson starting things off. Chen Ming Wong, who defeated the Tigers the last time he faced him back in New York on the last road trip. Facing Granderson, who tripled in the ballgame twice last night. 21 for the year. And he lifts this one in the air to center field. Easy play for Melky Cabrera. One gone. You know, you're talking about that game last Sunday when uh, Wong beat the Tigers. I thought Joe Torre, their manager, just made a, an outstanding move. It was the seventh inning, and he had sent Wong back out to the mound. But Sheffield was coming up, Ordonez was coming up, and Guillen was coming up. And he went to his bullpen and brought in big Jabba Chamberlain, and he shut down the Tigers in that inning. And it appeared the Tigers were getting on to Wong. I thought it was an outstanding move by Torre. The Chamberlain has turned into a very nice weapon in the back end of their pen. They were starting to get to Wong in that ball game. He was a little rattled. We told you the Tiger that stole a couple of bases. He had balked once. Here's Polanco. Ball one to Placido. And their goal is to make him get the ball up. As it is against all sinker ballers. And he's got a real good sinker.
Left that one up and outside. One ball and one strike. Here, two balls and no strikes. Jin Ming Wong is 27 years old. He hails from Taiwan. He won a career high 19 games last season, which tied for the league lead. Finished second uh, to Johan Santana in the Cy Young Award voting. A lot of people don't know that. He was that good. And some nice numbers, certainly the best numbers of his big league career, which hasn't spanned very long. He has fallen behind 3 0 on Polanco. Placido at 337. There's that slow, methodical windup by Wong. That is strike three and one. So, how much of the game were you able to stay up for last night? I watched bits and parts of it. Uh, I think I probably caught a good four innings total. It's not bad. Not bad at all. I'm going to sleep and waking up. <laughs> I tip my hat to you and uh, Dan Petrie and our crew, our cameramen, and everybody here at the ballpark. Well, everybody did a great job because once you get that late or early, I should say, into the morning, your mind can drift a little bit. And everybody was right on that game. Our crew was outstanding last night. That they were. What I saw, they were on top of everything. And you know, the truck was on top of their game, as they always are. Three and two. You've got Marcus Thames waiting on deck. What is it about those Roger Clemens starts, though? I don't know. A couple 17 of years. innings. Yeah. When he was going for 300 wins here. And last night he kept y'all here to 330. Question is, what is it about games that Rod Allen misses? That <laughs> <laughs> brings out the wackiness. <laughs> Three and two. And that's high ball four. Tigers get their first base runner, a one out walk to Polanco. He's going to bring up Marcus Thames. This has been a little bit of an issue now for the Tigers with Sheffield out of the lineup. Who bats third and how much production can they get from that spot? We've seen Casey bat third. We've seen Thames bat third. It's kind of tough to replace a guy like Gary Sheffield who has done what he has done over his entire major league career and the kind of fear that he puts in opposing pitchers. Thames takes way inside as he jackknifes out of the way with a fastball up 1-0. This might be a good matchup for Marcus Thames. Uh, Wong has got that natural two sinker. A two seam sinker that uh, kind of runs right back over the heart of the plate. And if he gets one up, I mean, we know Marcus has the kind of power that he can tie this score at two real quick. Wong is also a guy that gets a lot of ground balls. And in fact, uh, nobody was better at getting ground balls back to the mound last season. I think Fausto Carmona has a little bit better of a ratio in innings, or I should say, pitches per inning this season but uh, Wong was among the best in that category as well. Averages a little over 14 pitches per inning. That's inside again. Two balls no strikes on 10. He's probably paying a little bit too much attention to Polanco. I mean, Polanco very seldom runs. But Wong giving him long looks. He's also thrown over there once. And when you do that, uh, you fall behind uh, dangerous hitters like Tim's. Runner bluffed back. Polanco this year, four steals. He's been caught three times. Sheffield has been the Tigers best base stealer and again he is out of the lineup. Branderson is next in line. The 2 0 is a strike call. Thames checking his swing. Two and one on Marcus. It's a well located fastball by Wong. It's a good thing that Thames didn't swing at that when you're sitting in the batter's box two balls and no strikes. What you try to do as a hitter is pick out one pitch in one zone and if you get that particular pitch that's the one that you have to let it all hang out on that's popped up behind home but back out of play just a couple of rows deep 
Two and two on Thames. Three four fifteen on this homestand for Marcus. You were telling me that uh, Craig Monroe got a base hit last night for the Chicago Cubs. He did. His first uh, plate appearance for the Chicago Cubs. He got an infield single. And with Monroe gone, Marcus Thames now seeing a whole lot of action. In fact, he was even before the trade of Monroe and when he was designated for assignment. The 2 2 with the runner going, a swing and a miss. Here comes the throw down to second, not in time. Thames. Strikes out, but a stolen base for Polanco. Polanco picked the right uh, ball to run on. It was a breaking ball from Wong, and uh, he steals his fifth base of the season. Polanco doesn't run that often. Posada took his time, made a strong throw, but it was to the right side of the second base bag. Or left side, depending on what you're looking at. Wow, meantime... Cleveland has put up a five spot in the first inning on Kansas City. I guess they're a little angry after getting beat two to one last night by the Royals. They're still batting in the first. Ground ball left side base hit. Here comes Polanco. Damon has no chance of throwing him out. It's an RBI single for Maglio Ordonez. The stolen base was huge. Tigers uh, in some ways manufacturing a run there with the steal. Maglio's on a whole different planet right now. I mean, a whole different planet. Wong got the ground ball that he needed on the single ball, but the ball was up. And Maglio just was able to drive that ball between A-Rod and Jeter. And uh, anything, anytime the ball is hit the left field, you're going to see guys try to take the extra base. Uh, Donny, Johnny Damon's arm is not all that strong in left. So it's a 2-1 ball game. That'll bring up Carlos Guillen, last night's big hero late. He has the tying run aboard here. And Wong misses down low. First hit of the ball game for the Tigers. It belongs to Ordonez, who has 116 RBIs. And again, uh, Maglio has done it so often this year, but a big two out hit to drive in a run. Lifted foul back out of play. One ball, one strike. Well, Guillen hit the big blow in the bottom of the 11th last night. He went down and got this ball, too. Off his shoe tops. And that whole inning uh, started with a two out, nobody on single from Sean Casey. That's high on the fastball, and Guillen lays off two and one. A lot of Wong's pitches today are up. He usually has that power sinker ball, and he can throw that whenever he wants to, but maybe he's throwing the ball up by design. You never know. But he has elevated quite a few pitches here in the very first inning. That's inside. Three balls, one strike. So Wong walked Polanco. He struck out Thames, but following the stolen base, they hit by Ordonez. And Guillen trying to keep it going here. Carlos at 305 this year. He has hit safely in eight consecutive ballgames. Three one is fouled off, three and two. So that means Ordonez will be off and running here. Runner goes on 3-2, and it's swung on and missed. Struck him out to end the inning, but the Tigers get a run back. Guillen arguing that he fouled that ball off, but to no avail. RBI hit for Maglio to make it 2-1. to one.
is brought to you by your Detroit area Chevy dealers. Visit us online today at ChevyDrivesTheMotorCity.com. Carino's Italian Grill, not your garden variety Italian. By Art Van Furniture, the only furniture store with a total satisfaction guarantee. And by your Chrysler and Jeep Superstore. Well, what a difference a night makes in terms of the weather. 73 at game time. It is absolutely gorgeous here tonight. And nothing but sunshine. 2 1. The Yankees have the lead as we go to the top of the second. It'll be Jeremy Bonderman back to the hill to face Cano, Betamit, and Cabrera. Robinson Cano was just one for five last night, batting 305, and he takes a ball 1 0. Two out, two run double by Hideki Matsui in the first inning gave the Yankees the lead. Hard ground ball to second base right at Polanco. One away. We uh, mentioned earlier in the ball game that Polanco had that error that was charged to him reversed. Uh, we just found out when we got to the ballpark today that that error that was charged to him in the first inning was reversed. So his errorless streak is still intact. That ball that he threw to Marcus Thames, they have now given Thames the error. He was playing first base last night, so Polanco's streak is still going. Here's Wilson Betamit. Fastball rides inside 1 0 on Betamit. He was hitting 231 with 10 home runs for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Slider away 2 0. Another hard ground ball. This one to the first baseman, Guillaume, on the backhand. Bonderman covers. Two gone. Carlos looking pretty good over at first base, playing that position like he's been there a bunch, and he really hasn't. I mean, shortstop by trade, but I guess if you can play that shortstop position, you can play anywhere. Well, nice one. feed to Bonderman. Gave him the ball before he got to the bag to make sure he wasn't uh, trying to catch the ball and find the bag at the same time. To me, the one thing that's impressive about Guillen at first base is his footwork. He seems to have his footwork down for a position that he's not played a lot of. He played some shorts, uh, some first base last year for the ball club, of course. And he also played uh, some first base uh, last spring for Venezuela in the World Baseball Classic. And he's got a pretty good infield instructor in Rafael Belliard as well. Yeah, that helps. One of the uh, under the radar coaches for the Tigers who positions the defenses quite a bit throughout the course of the game and works with the infielders. They got a nice staff down there. Of course, Sean Casey is has been as good as it gets defensively at first base. Third start of the year for Guillen at first in this one tonight. Fly ball in the air to shallow right field. Ordonia is under it. Quick one, two, three inning for Jeremy Bonderman. One and a half in the books. Two one Yankee.
Second Detroit trailing by one early in this ball game, and they fans are right back with you tomorrow with the third game of this series against the Yankees. It will be seen on Detroit area on WJBK, Fox 2, as well as Tigers TV network affiliates. Coverage begins at 1 p.m. Check local listings. Yankees on top by a run. A much nicer night to bring the youngsters out to the ballpark here this evening. Of course, the school is right around the corner. But how about the fans that stayed around until the end of the ball game last night? That Stunning. was amazing. I don't know how many there were. I haven't seen any estimates, but uh, it was a really large group of fans that were still here at 3.30. And you know it did rain even after they started the game. It wasn't a heavy rain. It was more of a mist and a light rain, but uh, there were patches of rain throughout that game. And they sat through that. It's pulled in the air to right field straight at Bobby Abreu and Rebello was out one gone. But it was impressive. To talk about uh, when they talk about these Tigers fans being outstanding baseball fans. Well best fans in America aren't they? Number one they saw town in the country. That's right. And they have come out in huge numbers this season. Another big crowd on hand here tonight. Had a sellout officially last night, although a few of them decided they didn't want to wait for the first pitch, but uh, most of them did. That's something the Yankees are accustomed to playing in front of sellout crowds. They do it every night. The last 14 games have been in front of sellout crowds. Seven at home and seven on the road and they travel well. It's like they have their own section. Yeah they do. Boo. Here's the 1 0. Here's the strike. 1 and 1 on Sean Casey. One for two last night. It was Casey's two out single that started things in the bottom of the 11th inning. Maglio then followed with a hit and then Guillen finished her off. The chopper foul down the first baseline hit it off his foot. And it appears to be the foot that Casey has wrapped up. All that protection. Players got here very late today. Some of them rolled yeah. in at 5:35, just enough time to grab a quick cup of coffee, maybe a little bite to eat, go to the cage and get loose and strap it on. Neither team took batting practice before the game today. I'm sure uh, some loosened up in the tunnels below, but the Yankees bus got to the ballpark very late today. Here's the one-two. That one is going to stay in fair territory on the ground to second base. Cano throws him out to away. I got to ask you, I don't think we've talked about it very much, but are you surprised at all what the Seattle Mariners are doing? Yes. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'll be honest. I am more than surprised. I know they have a very good bullpen, and I know that they can hit a little bit, but that rotation, I just didn't think they had it in them. I mean, they are just a game behind the Angels, and they're leading by two in the wild card. Yeah, they're 20 over. How about that? And one manager quit. <laughs> That's right. They were on, I think, what, an eight game winning streak at that point? Exactly. That's lifted foul. Back to the screen. 0 oh 1 on Brandon Inge. Brandon very nearly won the ball game last night for the Tigers with that line drive that was caught by the first baseman, Phillips, with the bases loaded. And it would have been a real pick me up for Brandon because Inge right now is over his last 14. Uh, Inge has the ability to bunt for a base hit and when you get over 10 over 11 you ought to think about dropping down a bunt just to get yourself a base hit. Yeah he's got the speed to do it and he knows how to do it. With the stuff that uh, Wong features with that power sinker is he easier or tougher to bunt. It would not be difficult to bunt him as long as you wait long enough to allow the ball to travel deep enough in the batter's box to so all you have to do is drop the barrel get it down there and then run down the first a rod is playing him in the parking lot. <laughs> Here's the two one pitch. Little pop up this one might drop it will. <laughs> He'll take that. You think he will. <laughs> it's better than the bunt. 
He may he may crack a smile right now, but he'll take it. That breaks an 0 for 14. He's trying not to laugh. Look Sometimes those are the ones that get you going. And he's trying to get a laugh out of him. And Wong got all in his kitchen, but he didn't shatter his back. And Cano couldn't get to it. He'll take that. And run with it. It's all as good as a bunt. Tying run is on. That'll bring up Ramon Santiago. And he may steal, too. Apparently, they feel like they can steal some bases with Wong on the mound because they stole a couple in New York last Sunday. And they already have one today. And Polanco stole the one today. And he doesn't really run that often. No, I don't know what uh, Wong's times are to the plate, but he seems to have that relatively high leg kick and that slow motion. This would be a good situation to do in. Betamid is holding the runner at first base. Santiago two for four offensively since joining the Tigers from AAA. And he slaps one foul left field line. One and one on the affable Ramon Santiago always bouncing around the clubhouse with a smile. He knows his role in this organization. He knows that he's not going to start here with the pieces they have in front of him. But he's done the job at AAA and when he has been needed they have called him to the big league level. I think he has kind of realized that he's going to be a utility player. Nothing wrong with that. Not at this level and it takes some guys a long time to. Uh, to come to grips with that. I mean you played every day since high school you played every day in the minor leagues. He had a chance to play every day in the big leagues at some point in time and a lot of times that's tough to swallow. When you're told that you're no longer an everyday player you're going to be a platoon player. Bring about five gloves to the ballpark. The one one pitch. One and two on Santiago. That's a good pitch by Wong a change up to a guy that you know is trying to hit the ball the other way. Because you get him out in front and you fool him and if he makes contact he rolls over something weakly. You know, to the right side of the infield. It's a good pitch. Pulled foul back into the seats down the right field line. Oh, two was Santiago's first year in the big leagues with Detroit. He spent the entire 03 season. He was the everyday. Uh, was he playing second base that first year? In, yeah. In, in, in 03, it was Infante playing. With Infante. Infante was the shortstop, I believe, yeah. at that point. And Santiago was the everyday second base. And they were known as Infantiago. That's good. <laughs> no, actually, it's pretty bad. The one two is swung on and missed. He struck him out to retire the side. So the Tigers still trail two to one. When we come back, we'll talk some Red Wings hockey. Ken Holland, the GM of the Wings, will join us in the booth.
for the Tigers by a score of two to one. Our pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Ken Holland, the general manager of the Detroit Red Wings, who is going to spend some time with us this half inning. And Ken, I know that uh, this is really an important time of the season for you. Uh, your season is about to kick off fairly soon here. But the important, the important question is, what were you doing at 3.30 in the morning when the Tigers were still playing last night? Did you catch any of that game? No, I didn't. I kept looking on TV, and about 10.30 last night, I switched to a different station, and this morning I watched ESPN, and they had the score. I couldn't believe the game that went on. I went to, to the Internet and read all, uh, all about last night. It was amazing, obviously. See, you don't have to deal with rain delays in the NHL, which is pretty nice. Yeah, no, we're, uh, we're lucky. Uh, the occasional pane of glass that explodes, that's about it. Yeah, huh? the, yeah the, most times, yeah, we know we're going to start within a couple of minutes, and uh, we know within two and a half, three hours, except in the playoffs, obviously, uh, overtime. Johnny Damon will lead it off for the New York Yankees. Damon Jeter and Abreu facing Jeremy Bonderman. Well, you guys getting ready to get started. You got some young players that are coming in going down to Traverse City, don't you? Yeah, a week from Wednesday we uh, we go to Traverse City, Rod, and we have, uh, um, starting a week from Friday, we have eight NHL teams there with their prospects. Uh, we have a prospect tournament for a week, and then the veterans show up for, for main camp for five days. That's flared back out of play. One ball and two strikes. Well, Everybody at this time of the year, I guess, is a Stanley Cup uh, hopeful. And uh, as you look at your hockey club this year, what are your thoughts and how the offseason transpired for you and what you'll go into camp with? Well, we like our team. We thought uh, we thought we had a lot of guys that uh, got some good experience in the playoffs. Um, so, uh, you know, we've got some kids that are very close. So we're anxious to get to training camp. And, you know, we probably, you know, you've always got some needs, but I think in a league where you've got uh, a salary cap, Everybody's got got a wish list. You can't you can't uh, get every wish. Some of that has to happen with some of your kids and some of your young players. With uh, most of your young players, do they play hockey year round, or are they here in Detroit, kind of working on strength and fitness, conditioning, and that type of thing? But what do your younger players do? Not your veterans, but the young players. Well, what we really do is uh, in July we're allowed to bring our young players in for a week. We educate them. Uh, that's belted in the air, pretty good in the right field. This one might get out of here, and it is gone. Wow, Johnny Damon put a charge into one into right center field, and the Yankees had another run. And Bonderman buzzed his tower on that one-two pitch, and Damon didn't appreciate it very much. We told you coming into the game that Damon was the one that uh, Bonderman needed to watch for. He is uh, 12 for 28 against him, and uh, he hit one where many don't go. That's the second time in two starts that he has got Bonder. Last week in New York, he went upper tank against him. Just inside the foul pole, 412 feet on that last home run. He got some sleep this morning. <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> Maybe one of the few guys that did. 3-1 is the score now as Derek Jeter stands in. You're talking about that prospect camp now? Not yeah, camp, but the yeah, players every, bring in for a week. I think in all sports, it's a, it's a year-round education process to, so that as the players start to get into their early 20s, they know they got to hit the gym. And uh, players between the age of 18, those are kids that we draft to 21 for three years. We bring them in in July. Uh, I think it's also important to have veteran players around like Chris Chelios, Chris Draper, Nick Lidstrom, Steve Eisenman to realize uh, what it takes to be a pro. you got to go to the gym every day. It's, it's, uh, you're, there's a big difference between it being a professional and an amateur. So strength is a big part of your game. Very, very big part. I really think that, you know, sometimes we draft players that they, they, their skating needs to improve. We really think that uh, as they get leg strength, their skating can improve. And uh, obviously their shot can improve. Uh, I think that uh, strength, can, you, a player can improve by 10 to 20 percent just by, just by getting physically stronger. Has that changed over the years at all in terms of uh, getting these guys ready now as you mentioned it's a 12 month process to, to get the young guys acclimated and uh, how much has that changed over the years actually from the time that you played. Well I think that's really probably since uh, early 90s. Uh, Mary, I, you know when yeah. I played I retired in late 80 in the mid 80s you know training camp was uh, four or five weeks you played your way into, in, in, into shape I was, training it was just starting when I was, was when I was wrapping up my career uh, now it's year round. There's a bouncing ball fouled at third base. And speaking of training camp, uh, your first game, I believe, your first preseason game is on the 18th of September. I know baseball players complain that spring training for them is way too long. Do you get the same with hockey players that training camp might be a little bit too long, or, or is it a good uh, good amount of time? Well, actually, it's really uh, it's really quick. We uh, we open with our veteran players on a Thursday uh, with physicals on the following Tuesday. We start with our exhibition games. We play nine exhibition games, I think, in 14 days. It's flared into right field. Easy play for Ordonez. One away. 
We, be, we, we basically have three weeks of training camp and the season starts. You know, so uh, that's not long. That's uh, not long. In, in the old CBA, it was uh, it was about eight or nine days longer. The uh, the players in the uh, the league uh, agreed to uh, to shorten it. So uh, you know, it's uh, they got to come to camp in shape because it's if you're not in shape. You're not going to get yourself to shape in three weeks. Is that the new catchphrase this year, fire on ice? Yeah, that sure is, absolutely. Uh, we're excited about the upcoming season, and uh, there are some limited uh, amount of season tickets uh, available. Uh, you got the number there to call. With one out, Bobby Abreu stands in. Listen at you selling some tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Your work is never done, is it, Ken? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. I would be proud of you. <laughs> Here's the 0 1 to Abreu. That missed inside. One ball and one strike. How about these Tigers? We've got to talk a little baseball. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, obviously, I'm a huge uh, baseball fan. I grew up playing baseball, and uh, to follow the Tigers, uh, you know, it's, it's great to have uh, big time games uh, in late August and, and, and September. And, uh, you know, it's, what are they, I think a game and a half apart. So uh, they got another one more series with uh, with Cleveland. With Cleveland uh, yeah. They got to get healthy. Obviously, anytime you lose key players uh, like they had with Zamai out for a while and Kenny Rogers, now Sheffield, it, uh, if you can hang in there and get those guys back, uh, you're in great shape. Do you ever get together with any of the other general managers that are here locally and kind of pick their brains as to how they do what they do and uh, how their job goes? Well, Dave Dabrowski, I do, uh, you know, quite a bit when I come to the ballpark. Uh, developed a real good relationship with Dave, and uh, really respect what he's done in his career, what he's done with the uh, with the with the Tigers. So, uh, uh, I like picking Dave's brain uh, when I think he like, sometimes likes to get rid of me. I got so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ken. One of the things I've noticed about all the professional teams in this city, Tigers will go to Red Wings games. We've seen a lot of the Pistons players come to Tigers games and they all kind of pull for each other and I think that's kind of neat to have all the professional organizations here in town kind of pulling for one another and that seems to be the case in the city. I'm not sure it's it's the same uh, elsewhere in this country. No I think it's uh, it's because of the people because of the state and the city of uh, you know Midwest people are wonderful people and uh, they get behind all the sports teams and I think uh, you know obviously uh, we have one owner for the baseball and, 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 and the hockey but uh, unlike you we get uh, sometimes we get uh, I haven't seen many basketball players, but certainly we get the odd football player. We get lots of Tiger players come over to our uh, to our games. So uh, it's been great for the community. Uh, you know, you've got uh, you know Tigers were in the last year in the World Series, and uh, we were in the Final Four. And Pistons were in the Final Four. And hopefully, the Lions can uh, can get her going and have a great preseason. There is nothing like getting deep into the playoffs, is there, and a chance to play uh, for the ultimate a championship in your league. It's fun just to have a chance to know that you got a chance to win. I think that's what everybody, uh, you know, you, you want to be on a team in a situation where you just, you've got a chance. You've got, you've got hope. Runner goes with A-Rod at the plate. Throw down to second. Sails a little bit on Rabello and a stolen base. That is the second stolen base today that Bobby Abreu has gotten off of Bonderman. And this one wasn't even close. I mean, this one wasn't close. We've talked about how this Yankees team in the past has pretty much been station to station, but this year they've got some guys that have stolen some bases. They've got some speed. It's a well-rounded ball club. They've got talent. It's 19 now for Abreu and a chance to drive in another here for Alex Rodriguez, who walked and scored back in the first inning. Got a chance to chat with the Ken Holland, the general manager of the Detroit Red Wings, and uh, training camp right around the corner. And uh, Ken, I know that uh, in baseball. The word grind is used a lot because of the volume of games played and they don't play as many obviously in the NHL but I think it's as big a grind and you can speak to that about how really difficult it is for some of these players as we see the uh, ball knocked down by Inge and A-Rod at the board to get through an NHL season it's no joke man to go from start to finish and win a championship in your league. Well, yeah you know what I think in all, in all sports uh, like you know it's just the mental toughness is so important and I, I think the a lot of that has to do too with the physical strength. I think if you're an athlete and you've done all your training uh, and you're prepared, it helps your mental preparation because you know that you've done everything that you can. And uh, you know the NHL season obviously is uh, is 80 games, and then uh, it's four best of seven series. Right. You know it's uh, it's a physical game. Uh, uh, you know, so it's important that you're you're in great shape and you, your your organization has real good depth. Because there's quite a few fist of cups in that game that you guys play. Do you ever get scared that one of your great players is going to get hurt in one of those altercations? But I think uh, you always worry about your players. You know, they, but at the same time, uh, 
It's part um, of the game. It's part of the game, and if you want to win, you got to, you know, sometimes you got to fight, sometimes you got to go <laughs> into those hard areas, and you got to sacrifice your body. That's, uh, you know, that's what I think I was most proud about our guys last year. Obviously, there were some, some questions heading into the playoffs. You know, everybody thought that we had good skill about the, the, the toughness, the mental toughness, the physical toughness of our team. And I thought our team physically stood up and uh, matched uh, the three teams that we played in the playoffs. And I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that that's uh, going to be a real confidence builder for our team heading into this season. Here is Posada now with two outs and runners at first and third. The Yankees have added another run here in the third inning. And looking for some more. And one thing Bonderman is doing, he is pitching inside, uh, not necessarily effectively, but he is going in there with regularity. And uh, he is making some of these Yankees hitters move their feet. He's going back in there again. It's fouled back out of play. Uh, don't forget, tickets are available for uh, Red Wings hockey, which is right around the corner. Ticket plan still available 313 396 7575. That's the phone number. Prospect camp coming up beginning of the 7th. And then Mini camp or the main camp, I should say, September 13th. And uh, Traverse City now has uh, it's kind of been your fort for a while. How many years in Traverse City? We've been here since uh, September of 1997 after we won our first Stanley Cup. Uh, it's, it's, you know, they got two ice surfaces. Uh, we got a lot of fans up there. The rink is full. Uh, you know, it's a great opportunity to get our players away for five or six days so we build some chemistry. The uh, charity golf coming up as well in the dinner too. Is that correct? Yeah, the uh, the first night uh, we have a golf term up there to raise money um, for local charities, and then uh, Ken Daniels, Mickey Redman, uh, and all our players uh, are at, a, at a at a supper to raise money for the for the local charities. Here's the one-one runner bluffs at first. What kind of golfer is Ken Daniels? Be honest now. <laughs> Be honest. I rather really watch him on TV. <laughs> Kenny, I hope you're watching this. <laughs> if he's not watching, he's going to hear about it. Yeah. Someone needs to invent something so you can like homing devices to the balls if you play with Ken Daniels. <laughs> nice. <laughs> We're gonna get this on tape and we'll send him a copy. How about that? Ken? Here's the one two runner goes and it's high no throw down to second as a rod steals it standing up so another swipe. Well we do know that uh, not only the Yankees but most teams uh, that Bonderman starts against if they get themselves in a situation you know, they will try to steal a base. Two balls two strikes with runners at second and third and two outs 18 steals now for a rod. And Posada one swing of the bat away from getting a couple of more runs here for the Yankees. It's low and the count fills now three and two. Well opening night you guys aren't messing around are you? You've got the Stanley Cup champs. Yeah we're hoping to catch them tired. They open in London England against the uh, Los huh? Angeles Kings on a Friday and a Saturday. We, we get them here on uh, on the Wednesday, so hopefully they've got a little jet lag, little and, jet lag. Yeah, and we can catch them, uh, <laughs> catch them a little soft. But uh, you know they're, they're the best team in the league, and uh, we got to be ready to go. Three and two, crowd starting to get into it a little bit now. Bonderman looking to get out of his frame with only one run in. Osada is 0 for 1 in this ball game, and the 3-2 pitch. Is in the air towards center field. Should get him out of the inning. Granderson is there to retire this side. Ken, we appreciate it. Good Thanks. luck this year. All the best. Thank you. Peter. Thanks very much. All Always right. a pleasure. Yeah, nice talking to you guys. Ken Holland, general manager of the Detroit Red Wings. They're getting ready to start up. Here it's 3-1 Yankees in the middle of the third.
to one as we go to the bottom of the third. Here at Comerica Park, the home run by Johnny Damon, his eighth of the year, lengthened the lead, although Bonderman pitched out of further trouble by stranding a couple. And the Tigers now in the bottom of the third have the top of the order. Curtis Granderson, Placido Polanco, and Marcus Thames. That little dude got his face all painted up. I think you ought to do that one night. I'd do it if you do it. Eh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thought I'd ask though. Granderson fly to center. He's 0 for 1. Chin Ming Wong back at the hill. He has given up an RBI hit to Ordonez. And nothing more for the Tigers. They have just two hits so far tonight. We're talking about Granderson now with 21 triples. The American League record for triples in a season is 26, and it's shared by Shoeless Joe Jackson of Cleveland in 1912 and Wahoo Sam Crawford of the Tigers in 1914. Long time ago. I mean, it's just amazing when you think about it. He's got a shot. The fact that nobody's hit as many triples in Detroit. As Granderson has since Ty Cobb. He's out one away. Here's graphical evidence. First Tigers player to collect 20 or more triples in a year since 1917. Not sure graphical is a word, but I used it. Cobb had 24 triples that year. And Tyrus Raymond is immortalized here at Comerica. The spikes are flying. Here's Placido Polanco. Little chopper right back to Wong. Two outs. It looked like Wong kind of settling in here in the bottom of the third. Couple of uh, the ground balls off the bat to Granderson and also Polanco. Both guys got jammed as well. Well, that last ground ball back to the mound, reminiscent of last year when he recorded 42 assists, which was tops among all American League pitchers. Well, when you go up against Wong, you know he's going to have that power sinker on most nights. Uh, for the most part, he throws 80% fastballs, but they're moving at the bottom of the strike zone. If you can get him to get the ball up, uh, you can drive the ball into some gaps, or if you can get him in the stretch by getting runners on base, you can steal some bases against him, as the Yankees have done already today. Tigers have one steal of their own. That was Polanco, which set up the Tigers' only run. He swiped the bag back in the first after walking. And Marcus tried to hold up, unable to do it. One and one. Here's the one one pitch. Right at the knees, one and two on Tim's. That's Tim's pitch, too, right there, but he's already thrown him a few breaking balls, and Tim's might have been looking for a breaking ball there on the 1 1 pitch and missed the fastball that he should have been swinging at. Now the 1 2, and that one just missed the outside corner. It's a good call by Posada. Knowing that Tim's took that other fastball, possibly looking for a breaking ball in the back of his mind, he threw him back to back fastballs and had that ball gotten more plate, and Tim's would have been struck out. Instead, the count fills up now three and two. That's what good catchers will do. And they know exactly what you're looking for just by watching your actions in the batter's box, whether you're looking for a fastball or whether you're looking for a breaking ball. Here's a 3 2 pitch. Tipped it into the glove for strike three to retire the side. Four strikeouts now for Chin Ming Wong. It's 3 1 Yankees.
Park and a gorgeous evening for baseball in downtown Detroit. A lot of uh, runs early in this game. Hey, Matsui got them on the board first in the first inning, driving in a couple. Bonderman had a couple of outs in that inning before a base hit, a walk to A-Rod, and then a double by Matsui and Maglio. Gets it going after Polanco walked and stole a base. And then you got the third inning. Johnny Damon hit one a long, long way. I mean, a long way. And that made it three to one. And that is where we stand as Bonderman goes back to the hill facing Cano, Betamit, and Cabrera, the bottom three hitters in the Yankees lineup. Three runs on four Yankees hits. Tigers a run on two hits. This young kid here has got one pretty swing. I mean, he has got real good plate discipline. Hits the ball hard just about every time he swings the bat and uses the entire field. Ooh, look out. Down he goes. As he hits the deck and a pitch up and in. That's way too close. In the air toward left field and caught by Marcus Thames. Cano is 0 for 2. One gone in the fourth inning. Bonderman looked like he was going to get through the first inning tonight without allowing a run. Two outs, nobody on. Then Abreu singled, stole second. A-Rod walked. And Matsui doubled in two. And the first inning woes continue to set the tone for the opposition. Betamit slaps one toward left field, and Marcus again will make the play. Two gone. We'll bring up the number nine hitter, Melky Cabrera. Cabrera is 0 for 1. He fly to the right fielder Ordonez. He was back in the second inning. Cabrera last month had an 18 game hitting streak. It spilled over into the month of August as well. When he finally found some playing time last year with the injury to Matsui, one of the things that Joe Torre loved about Cabrera was that he seemed to bring a lot of energy to the lineup and to uh, the ball game each night. Here's the 2 0. Good pitch, a strike, a slider, 2 and 1. When you have a veteran laden team like Torre has on most years, it's nice to have a young kid come up, fresh face. You know, that's just learning his craft at the major league level that runs all the time, hustles all the time. Not that all his guys don't do that, but it's nice to have young players. Santiago waits for it to drop into his glove in a one, two, three inning. It took only eight pitches for Binderman. Ordonez, Guillen, Rebello coming up.
people as they come to, to the bat here. And, hey, fans, there's still time to plan a group outing to watch the Tigers at Comerica Park. Groups of 15 or more get discounted tickets for select games in September. Be there in numbers to help out the Tigers during the home stretch. Order your group tickets now by calling 313-471-BALL or visit Tigers.com. Little work to do for the Tigers. They're down 3-1 to one as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. And it'll be Ordonez, Guillen, and Ribello against Chin Ming Wong. Sinker in for a strike 0 and 1. It was Ordonez that drove in the Tigers' only run back in the first. 116 RBIs in Maglio now batting 358. I don't think I've ever seen a player as dialed in as Maglio has been for the entire four months of the season already well we've seen him now for a couple of years and yes I know that he was not 100 percent healthy his first couple of years in a Tigers uniform but he has absolutely taken it to another level I mean the power numbers not quite where he probably would like them to be well, there's another base hit but he is hitting the ball to all fields he does drive the ball in the seats when he needs to and there's not a runner on second base that he doesn't drive in literally over 400 with men in scoring position. That hair getting long again, too. Is it? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's just about to touch the collar. You know, at the beginning of the year, Leland told him if you hit 300 and drive in 100 and hit 30 home runs, he said he would wash his hair, he would roll it up, he would blow dry it. I'm sure Leland is learning how to do that about now. No, he would never do that. That's what he said he'd do. <laughs> I still don't think he'd do it. If I was Maglio, I'd hold him to it. I would too. Because he's old, upholding his end of the bargain. Promise is a promise. Here's Guillen. That's when Leland was asked by the reporters, was he going to make Maglio cut his head? Leland said, not a chance. Remember in Kansas City when he actually got it trimmed? Everybody was freaking out because he was going so well. Why would you mess with your hair when you're going so well? But it didn't make a difference. I noticed Leland had his uh, baseball cleats back on too yeah, tonight. He's, he's feeling better. Yeah, his back's feeling better. He's had him the last couple of days, actually. Yeah, he's this is the game stretch. This is the home stretch now. <laughs> you can't mess around. You gotta pull out the cleats. He and Bobby Cox, the only two managers that wear cleats. <laughs> That's beautiful. As he would say, it's a baseball game, not a tennis match. There's the ball outside, 2-0. Oh. He did say that to someone, did. didn't he? And one of our folks asked him, why do you wear, why do you wear cleats? <laughs> because it's a baseball game, not a tennis match. <laughs> he is intense. I'll tell you what, for as good a manager as he is, he is really one outstanding human being. He's a good people's person. That slice right to the third baseman, A-Rod. And he played perfect. It looked like it was headed to the corner. Uh, he had him played perfectly. Well, A-Rod realizes that most left-handed hitters aren't going to hit that ball directly down the third baseline. So what he does is he sort of shades himself over towards shortstop where the left-handers would hit the majority of their balls when they're going that way. He's played a couple of the left-handed batters in that same spot. Well, here's Rabello, who's batting sixth in the lineup today. And it's the first time Rabello has hit this high in the order. He's going to pull that one foul. Well, he got two or three hits the last time he played. He was playing the bat well. He came in at 283 and five for his previous 11. Leland bumped him up. And if he stays in that spot, he'll get some RBI opportunities because uh, some teams will pitch around Guillen. Uh, to get to Rebello, no disrespect to Mike, but that's just the nature of the game. Butch gets the night off. More than likely, he will play the day game tomorrow. This one slapped foul, third base side, 0 and 2 on Mike Rebello out of Tampa, Florida. Sure, coming into camp that he felt uh, this would be his year to get his opportunity, but then Vance Wilson went down with the elbow injury, and Vance gone for the year, and lo and behold, here it is, almost September, and Rebello has been the backup to Pudge Rodriguez all season.
pulled foul again. He's gone to right and to left on Xin Bing Wong. Three to one Yankees lead. We're in the fourth inning. Tigers got a leadoff single from Ordonez. There's a bouncing ball to third base. A Rod fires to second one of the relay is high and he overthrew it. So Ravello is on with two outs. They get the force at second base. Again, A Rod was playing well off the line. Mags might have bumped the good one up. And Cano had plenty of time. He just ran across the bag too aggressively. When you run across the bag this aggressively toward third base and you throw back across your body, more than likely it's going to be a poor throw. And he had plenty of time to stay there, straddle the bag, turn his body, and make a strong feed back to first base without being taken out by Maglio. That'll keep the inning going for Sean Casey. Did they have any tornado warnings down here at the ballpark yesterday? Not down here. Uh, in several areas in Metro Detroit, yes, but I don't believe there were any down here. Because I have to agree with you. I mean, I have to let you know. I was a little scared at, at the house. Really? Yeah, because it was, they were talking about tornado warnings, and I was getting ready to go to the basement. Did you uh, cuddle up under a blanket? No, I was watching the television, oh, trying okay. to figure out what was going on. No, I don't think anything was called for down here. There's a chopper hit to the second baseman down to an egos Cano and the side retired. So the Tigers get a hit and strand a man. And after four, it's still 3 1. You probably. Detroit as we go to the top of the fifth inning and don't forget to sail the Caribbean with Curtis Granderson and Joel Zamaya aboard the Tigers fan cruise November 10th through the 17th you'll visit St. Thomas San Juan Grand Turk three private events as well 800 727 1999 or visit Tigers.com. Bonderman back of the hill top of the order Johnny Damon Derek Cheater and Bobby Abreu. That's popped up. Left center field. Granderson and Thames and Thames calls and catches one gone. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six in a row. Set down by the right hand. Here's my inside information brought to you by Insurance Online Auto Insurance. In his season or his senior year at Kalamazoo Central, Derek Jeter hit 507 with four homers, 23 RBIs, and was 12 for 12. In stolen base attempts. Look at up some of those high school numbers. 
Batting average is outstanding, but uh, four home runs is not that many, nor is 23 RBIs. But up here, they don't get a chance to play a whole lot of games from a high school standpoint. No, not as much certainly as uh, they do down south or out west. That was in 23 oh, games. That's all they play is 23 yeah. games. The rest of them are either snowed out, rained out. But uh, he was going to be a number one pick if the Yankees didn't take him. There were a lot of other teams that were going to take Derek Jeter. And as a boy, he dreamt of playing for the New York Yankees. Grew up a Yankees fan. That slice towards second. Oh, what a play there by Polanco. Nicely done. Took a nice route to get to that ball. Instead of cutting straight across to knock it down, he headed out toward right field. And that's the only way that he makes this play. Look at the angle that he takes. He's out in the outfield grass now to stab that ball. He picked it cleanly and made a nice throw over to uh, Carlos Guillen. If you missed the uh, announcement earlier, they reversed that error from last night on Polanco, so his errorless streak is still intact. They changed it and gave the error to the first baseman, Marcus Thames. Here's Bobby Abreu. I'm talking about the scouting, and you've done some scouting. Is it more difficult to scout kids in the Midwest or colder? weather states do you think well I've never scouted in the Midwest but I would assume that it is a little tougher to uh, find kids in cold weather places because they don't play that much baseball and it's hard to judge kids while playing because a lot of times they're playing in such cold weather I think that's why so many of the players come from you know Texas from Florida and California but you can find some real good players uh, in some cold places like the Tigers first round pick this year Rick Porcello yeah out of Seton Hall prep who, by the way, was at the ballpark yesterday. And uh, it's not going to be long, hopefully, before he will suit up in the minor leagues and That's begin his journey. That's Scott Boris right here. The one two bounces in, two balls, two strikes. There he is, Scott Boris in the foreground. Yeah, super agent. He's got quite a few Tigers players. He's got Maglio, he's got Pudge, also an advisor. To Porcello. Got Alex Rodriguez too, I believe. <laughs> That's a pretty good stable. Yeah, just here, just here <laughs> in this ballpark, yeah. And there is Mr. Porcello. He got a nice seat. Well, you would hope so. <laughs> he got a real nice seat. He is a very well spoken young man. He has a very high great point average. I was listening to him. You're absolutely right. He was on the uh, pregame show with John Keating yesterday over on FSN. And Mr. Porcello and his parents are here. And misses outside. Three balls and two strikes. This is David Chad uh, sitting next to Porcello. The scouting uh, director for the Tigers and an outstanding scouting director. He's the one that had to go into his house and sign him. There's ball four. Now he knows that he did not want to walk Bobby Abreu because Abreu's already stolen two bases today. It's a third walk for Bonderman. So Jeremy shaking his head after that one, and he's going to face Alex Rodriguez in a three to one game. And a ball inside, 1 and 0. Well, you start looking down the line, and you figure if Porcello becomes the type of pitcher the Tigers envision he can be and will be, you know, the future is somewhat exciting in terms of starting pitching for Detroit. I'm assuming, of course, everyone stays healthy with the building blocks they already have here in Detroit. What's well, one thing that. Uh, I know management here now, headed by David Dabrowski, has always liked. They've always liked power arms. If there's a very good pitcher in that very first round, they don't shy away from him. And they have been fortunate to a degree in terms of they are willing to spend money on first round picks, and, and uh, some guys have dropped to them in the draft because of signability issues. But the Tigers are willing to invest into uh, the young players like a Rick Porcello. Who is getting his first visit to the Detroit area? 
and uh, he has said that uh, he is extremely impressed and extremely proud to be part of this organization. I wonder if he stayed around to 3:30 last <laughs> night. I don't know. It's a good question. There's a strike right at the knees. Three and one. Well, he's got all the tools physically, doesn't he? He does. 6'5, 195. Take a look at his high school season. Popped him up. He's going to get A Rod. Here comes the shortstop, Santiago. To retire the side. Nothing comes to the two out walk. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. Yanks by two. Carinos with the Yankees up three to one in the bottom of the fifth inning. Matsui had a big two run double in the first. Ordonez had an RBI single to answer for the Tigers in the first. And Johnny Damon with a home run, a solo shot in the third. Nighttime starting to settle in here in downtown Detroit. Game two in this series with the Yankees up three to one. See if the Tigers' bats can get going here. They have Inge, Santiago, and Granderson. Facing Chin Ming Wong. And Tiger's got to take that sinker ball and drive him the other way. That's what you have to do. You can't try to pull it. Or you will pound the ball into the turf all night long. But if you let it travel deep enough and try to inside out it, you can get some base hits that way. Brandon may as well take one here. Tigers have had a tough time getting runners on base. 2 0 count. They need some base runners. It would not be the worst thing in the world. Hit that one off his foot. Foul. So uh, he was swinging away. Two and one. Inch had that little flare single back in the second, breaking it over 14. Chin Ming Wong is 27 years old. The 2 1 lifted foul back out of play. And two balls and two strikes. You know, he doesn't look like he has that same kind of power sinker that uh, Fausto Carmona features of the Cleveland Indians. But when you look up at the radar gun, it's in that same velocity, 94, 95. This doesn't seem like it, though. Because when you watch Carmona pitch, it just, his ball just seems to get right in on you. Wicked. Quickly. And that's what some of the Tigers were saying after they faced Carmona. It, it just seems like a different look from Juan. But the numbers, as you mentioned, the speed numbers are the same. Three and two. Two for two for Brandon in. Sometimes a little bloop single will get you going. That was a good swing by Brandon. 
Outstanding swing. With two strikes, not trying to do a whole lot, letting the ball get deep in the strike zone, and just trying to put it in play. Head down. Perfection. Good weight transfer. And the leadoff man on. Here's Santiago. See, Tigers fourth hit of the game, so each squad now with four hits. I mean, Santiago might try to bunt for a base hit, but A Rod is kind of crowding him at uh, that third base position. But if he gets it on the line, he can get himself a base hit out of it. A Rod has been playing way off the line all night. I know why he's playing off the line now, because if when a guy is up there that uh, bunting is part of his game. The third baseman likes to cut toward the line and then veer back toward first base, which gets their momentum carrying him in that direction. And that's why he's playing Santiago the way that he's playing him right now. There goes the runner. Swing and a miss. Here comes the throw. Not nearly in time. A stolen base for Brandon in. And Jim put the hit and run on, but uh, probably didn't need to. And because the Tigers obviously feel like they could swing the bat to. Uh, and steal some bases against Wong out there. Not a good throw by Posada. And a nasty pitch by Wong. That one just sailed toward the shortstop side of the bag. And now a man in scoring position. Eight for ten for Brandon Inge in stolen bases. Swing and a miss. Santiago behind in the count. One and two. Ramon this year Triple A hit 263. He knocked in 30 in 91 games. Off the glove of Posada. He didn't even come close. And Inge will go to third. Well, you wonder if he was crossed up or not, or just being a little lazy. Kind of hard to tell. He was crossed up. Or was he? Hmm. Hopefully he knows the answer to that. Yeah. A lot of times when a catcher is crossed up, he will go out to the mound and have a conversation with the pitcher. He did that. He did not do that. Has ball. I think planked right off his glove. The 2 2. Little looper in the center field. It's caught by Cabrera. And in. Will hold up. Nothing Inge could do on that play anyway. The ball was hit so shallow, even if he was on the bag tagging up, it would have been a bang bang play at home plate. This is one of the tougher plays. You see Inge here, the ball's hit, he pauses momentarily, then he realizes the ball is going to be caught. He's in between, he tries to get back and tag, but Cabrera's got a good arm in the outfield. Nothing Inge could do there. So runner at third with one out. It's going to be Curtis Granderson to try and cut into this deficit. Granderson 0 for 2, five ball and a ground out. Curtis had a huge night last night with four hits. He tries to drop down a, a bunt. He tried to. Looked like uh, knocking down that first base line. Not a bad idea. Uh, better means is not a first baseman by trade. And that's the last thing they were expecting from Granderson. To know the second base position was playing rather deep. But at the same time, Granderson has the ability to hit a ground ball in that direction. And they were conceding the run with the infield playing back. Jim Leland was talking the other day about Granderson learning the difference between when he's leading off a game and when he's in an RBI situation and saying that it's still part of his game that he is learning and it's going to take time before he learns how to hit with runners in scoring position. Hey, this is going to get a Tigers run in without the benefit of a hit. Wild pitch in scores and it's three to two. Take him any way you can get him. Ball and a wild 
pitch and a stolen base. Figuring in for the Tigers as they get a run to cut the deficit to one. And Jim went on to say the Granders is no different than most young players in their second year in the major leagues. I mean, you throw, you're so much is thrown at you on a day-to-day -day basis. The one part of your game is bound to lag behind another part of your game. That was the ninth wild pitch of the year for Chin Ming Wong. Well, he, it's an interesting point because obviously he'll lead off once for sure in a ball game, but if he leads off an inning, it's a different mindset than when you come up with a couple of guys in scoring position and one out. And Granderson, much like Grady Sizemore, has the ability to drive in runs. Swing and a miss. Got him that time, and Wong has a strikeout. That's his fifth. I think it might have been a changeup or slider slider had slider spin to it. two outs There's Polanco each team with four hits. Yankees lead three to two. Much like last night's ball game, again a very entertaining contest between these two clubs. Tigers led a six to three lead get away last night before winning it at 11. Tonight it has been the Yankees that have led all the way. Tigers have had to come back. One ball and one strike. Chopper again right back to the mound. Second time Polanco has done that tonight and he is retired. Tigers squeeze out a run though. He played five at Comerica. 3-2 Yanks. Well, it's a one run ball game now, three to two, as we go to the top of the sixth inning at Comerica Park. Yankees lead the Tigers. And in front of yet another sellout crowd here at the ballpark tonight. The Yanks in town for a four game series that'll spill over in the next week. And then it's back on the road again for Detroit. Hideki Matsui leads it off. It'll be Matsui, Posada, and Cano. Bonderman gave up two in the first, one in the third, and nothing since. And he starts Matsui off with a fastball strike, 0 1. The only uh, pitcher out of the Tigers' bullpen that is not available tonight is Fernando Rodney. He was outstanding in last night's game. 
it's getting to the point now where every time he comes in, he's not only really good, but he's dominant. Yeah, he threw more changeups last night, though. In his uh, earlier appearances, since coming off the disabled list, he really established his fastball, but he got back to that change piece last night. Here's the 1 1. 1 and 2. One hit, three strikeouts, and walked one. Look who he struck out, though. Hmm. Three pretty good ones. Jeter A Rod Posada. Matsui loops one to left field, and he drops it in for a base hit. Matsui's good like that. It's one thing about the Japanese players, and not just the Japanese players, but most Japanese players, they really keep their. They start with the bat knob. As he's starting there, and it just keeps the bat head and the strikes on a long time. Take a look at the bat now. He starts that way, that lags the bat behind, and the bat covers the entire plate. I've noticed that about the majority of the Japanese players here stateside. Do most hitting instructors there teach it that way? Apparently they do, because a lot of the guys that uh, I played with over in Japan have similar approaches as the Matsui's and uh, Ichiro's of yeah. the world. Iwamura's. Well, this guy can just flat out hit. Two more hits tonight for Matsui, plus a couple of RBIs. And he has hit with power in both Japan and the United States. Posada is 0 for 2, and he takes a strike, 1 and 1. Well, he's a good double play candidate. Uh, should bond him and get him to hit something into the ground. He is grounded into 16 of them this year. Matsui doubled in two in the first inning to get the Yankees on the board and now he's uh, set up another opportunity here in the sixth. Posada slices one toward left Thames on the move and Marcus makes the catch. You know, I talked to Willie Horton uh, yesterday, Mario. He's in Pittsburgh with his daughter, uh, Terry. And uh, she received a double lung transplant yesterday. Really? A double lung transfer yesterday. Transplant, excuse me. Like they found a match for her. How's she doing? She was doing well when I talked to him yesterday. He said that uh, she had been sleeping the entire uh, day yesterday. And he expected her to wake up at some point in time during the course of the night. But uh, that's just a great story. A great feel-good story for Willie Horton and his family. Well, certainly our thoughts and prayers go out of the Horton family. A great Tiger. Bonderman had to hit the deck and a rocket hit right back up the middle by Cano. That is the second time in his last two starts that uh, somebody's hit a bullet off of him just like that right back up the middle. I forgot who it was last time, but I don't know how he got in the way of this one. Yee. He got skinny real fast. I don't know how that didn't hit him. It's another hit, the sixth of the ball game off of the Yankees. Here's Wilson Betamete. Bonderman backs him off the plate. One ball to no strikes. That's one thing Bonderman is doing today. He is pitching inside very, very aggressively. Gotten better beat on a ground ball in a line drive. And quite a few of them hit to the left fielder Marcus Thames this afternoon, or this evening, I should say. That's one of the guys who got a pretty good fastball, and they've got a lot of left handed bats in their lineup. They're tardy on the fastball, driving it in that direction. Plus, Bonded when he throws that two seam fastball up there, it's got some natural tail away from the left handed batters. Bonderman has not picked up a strikeout to this point. That's odd, which is really odd when you consider that we're good for seven or eight a night, it seems. 
Another one that misses low and outside. And there you have it. A lot of fly balls tonight. Yeah, none of those. He averages about seven and a half strikeouts per nine innings in his career. And you would think that his pitch count would be a little bit better than what it is right now because he hasn't racked up a lot of strikeouts in this game, but he's almost at 100. Number 98 is about to be delivered to the plate. But this Yankees team, you know, they've got some real good hitters. They've got great plate discipline. They don't swing a lot of balls. They wear you down. That's why they play those three and a half hour games every night. They do. And, and, and we joke about that quite a bit, but uh, I'll bet if you uh, pulled up the numbers, the Yankees play the longest games of anybody in the American League because of their offensive approach. That's why it's always dangerous to face them in a four game series when it comes to your bullpen. There's ball four inside, so that is going to load the bases. Fourth walk now for Bonderman. And here comes Chuck Hernandez. Hunter Wendelstead barking at Bonderman. You hot. Now Chuck Hernandez has a few words for him as he heads out to the mound and Wendelstead is going to take a couple of steps toward the mound. Yeah, you can see smoke come out the top of his head. <laughs> he's he's almost looking for something. Yep. He ain't gonna get much time to talk either. But Chuck Hernandez can't say anything about the strikes and balls, or he'll get run. Yeah, and that's the last thing he wants to do. So Hernandez heads back. Tim Burdak is warming up now for the Tigers. Bases are loaded for Melky Cabrera. That's a fair ball. Down the right field line. This is big time trouble. Matsui scores. Pinot right behind him. He'll score. They're going to wave Benamid around. He'll come to the plate. Here's the throw. Not in time. It's a triple for Cabrera. And the Yankees have now broken it open to 6 to 2. It's the bottom half of their batting order, too, doing all this damage. Well, he knew Bonderman was going to throw a strike, and he knew it was going to be something that he could hit. He didn't know it was going to be a slider, but it was, and uh, he was swinging all the way. A lot of times after that pitching coach goes out to visit and the bases are loaded, you know the guy has no room for air. You're going to get a strike. Infield in for Damon, who drives one to the gap in right center field. For Anderson on the run, stretches out and can't get it. Damon is on his way to third base. And Johnny Damon is in with a stand-up triple as Granderson made a valid attempt for it, but appeared to get either his glove or his arm on the ball. It looked like, uh, I don't know if he shouldn't have dove or what, but it looked like uh, once he dove, the ball hit down on the heel of the glove. Hit right off the heel of the glove. Great effort. You don't see it very often, but back-to-back -back triples. Anything is possible here at Comerica Park. Very true. Seven to two Yankees infield in now is still only one out. Hold for three for Derek Jeter and he takes the ball inside one and oh that's eight hits now for the Yankees. Strike call on the inside corner, 1 1. Big four runs, sixth inning. Milky Cabrera clearing the bases. And the three run triple. And then Damon scored him.
swing and a miss. It's a good pitch. I don't think he's had his good slider today, and that's the reason why he has not recorded a strikeout. This is the good slider, but he hasn't thrown that many of them. Nice time for a strikeout now. Cheater just trying to put the ball in play with the infield in here. And he does, but right at the shortstop. And it's fielded before it hit the ground by Santiago. So two gone. I like the actions there by Santiago. Even though he knew that he caught that ball, he looked over to the third base umpire to see if he saw him catch it before throwing the ball across the diamond. Let's take a look at Santiago. He knows that he catches it. But he looks over and says, okay, did you see me catch it? I got it. And, but he was ready to throw it as well. Jim Leland will take the baseball from Jeremy Bonderman, who had a rough evening tonight. He will depart. Tim Burnack will come in. This pitching change is brought to you by the back and neck pain specialist at Dynamic Rehabilitation. And put up four runs here in the sixth inning. Jeremy Bonderman has been knocked out of the game five and two thirds tonight. He's given up eight hits, seven earned runs, and 105 pitches worth. He didn't strike anybody out in this game, which is very odd for Bonderman. We gave you his average strikeout numbers per start. So he will uh, give way now to Tim Burdak. The 30th time now that Burdak has been in the game for Jim Leland and his Tigers. 39 strikeouts and 32 and two thirds innings pitched against 20 walks. Seven to two ball game, and now with the runner at third and two outs, it's going to be up to Burdak here to get Bobby Abreu. Strike one on Abreu, who has been on base three times tonight, single two walks and two steals. The 0 1 pitch is a check swing, one ball and one strike. Abreu spent nine years over in the National League with the Philadelphia Phillies. He's a native of Venezuela, played in the World Baseball Classic for Venezuela. Swing and a miss. Burdak got him to go chasing one and two. Well, you just have to start to wonder now against Jeremy Bonderman, who's chatting with the veteran Kenny Rogers. Bonderman still has not won since the 13th of July. His last win was in Seattle. And the air to center. Granderson running back. Carrying on him, but he makes the catch. Side retired. Big inning, though. They put up four big ones, and it's now 7-2.
Florida break it open a bit and we're back with you tomorrow third game in this series against the Yanks. It'll again be seen in the Detroit area on WJBK Fox 2 as well as the Tigers TV network affiliates coverage begins at 1 p.m. Check your local listing Who's pitching tomorrow. It'll be Phil Hughes who is one of the Yankees big prospects and Jair Jurgens, one of the Tigers big prospects. So a couple of youngsters squaring off tomorrow. For game three. It'll be interesting to watch Jurgens go out there and pitch against this Yankees ball club tomorrow because uh, his first two appearances against the Cleveland Indians, he did nothing but attack the strike zone. And if he does that again tomorrow, he can have success. Meantime, Marcus Thames leads it off in the bottom of the sixth. Chin Ming Wong has allowed just a couple of runs, one of them scoring in a wild pitch. As we suspected, another sellout here at Comerica tonight, the 35th sellout of the season. 44,000. 250 have jammed into the ballpark tonight, but uh, it's not the night that Jeremy Bonderman was hoping for. Well, it looked like he was going to get out of that very first inning. He got two outs before giving up a single, a walk, and then a double, and they scored two runs. Broke his bat, looped into left. It's going to drop. Base hit. That'll get her started. Lead off single for Tim's, his first hit. Mentioned tonight that Bonderman has or did not get a strikeout. Only one other career start in which he didn't strike anybody out. One, one. We're talking career here. That's it. That was back in 2003. Here's Maglio. Wow. Every other start in his career has had at least one strikeout. Ordonez two for two. And that means his average is up to 360 again. And as I was saying earlier you know, regarding Bonderman, this might be a double play ball here. Jeter will relay it, and that is a double play. When he's not getting strikeouts, you would have thought that his pitch count would have been much more efficient, but he was still up over 100. Has been the bugaboo for uh, all Tigers pitchers, especially in the second half. We're just getting to that 100 marker in the fifth and sixth inning. We saw it with Andrew Miller, Bonderman tonight. And as a result, the Tigers have had to lean on the bullpen a little bit more than they wanted to. Burdak came out of the pen here tonight to get a Brayu. Here's Guillen with two outs. Ball one inside. Jason Grilly now is warming up. The 1 0 is hit right back to the mound and smothered by Wong, and he'll throw him out. So the Tigers are done. They get a leadoff single. Nothing doing, though. At the end of six, it is seven to two in favor of the Yankees.
seventh inning. And hey, fans, uh, make sure your name is on the list, the waiting list for 2008 Tiger season tickets. Deposits are being taken now for full or partial season ticket plans. Make the date for 2008, calling 313 471 ball or visit tigers.com. Well, we have a pitching change. It's brought to you by the back and neck pain specialist at Dynamic Rehabilitation. And it's now Jason Grilly taking over for Detroit. And Grilly's pitched quite a bit this year. 48th game that he's been in now, 5 and 3 record. Earned on average over 5 and a half. He takes over for Burdak. Here's A-Rod to lead it off. Breaking ball is grounded toward the shortstop Santiago who guns and gets it. Nice job by Santiago. Well he's got a real strong arm and he's already low to the ground and he backhands that ball and his right foot is already planted. The right foot is planted once he gets the ball in his glove. Now all he does is put it down and then throw it across the diamond and he needed to have some giddy up on his throw to get A-Rod. A-Rod can run. That's how Guillen plays that same ball. Carlos over at first base tonight. Here's Hideki Matsui. Matsui, another big night, two for three, has a couple of RBIs. He earned the nickname Godzilla when he was playing in high school in Japan for his offensive ability. When he played professionally in Japan, he hit 332 home runs in 10 seasons. And decided to take his game to the States. And he's not been a disappointment in New York. That is for certain. He's had a nice year this year. Really missing outside two and one. Twelve home runs since the all star break for Matsui. Strike call two and two. Really pitched a scoreless inning last night for the Tigers part of that bullpen that did such a terrific job. He gave up a two out walk but then struck out Matsui to close out the seventh. Two and two. At one point was a three to two ball game. Then the Yankees picked up back to back triples in the sixth. And four runs later, they made it seven to two. Well, since the uh, second half started, they are number one in just about every offensive and pitching stat in baseball. I mean, they're in number one up and down. Batting average, RBIs, runs scored, wins, wins percentage, you name it. They've done it. There was a time where Joe Torre's team was not doing very well. They were way behind in the standings, and they still will have trouble catching the Boston Red Sox because the Red Sox now are really starting to get hot again. Yeah, Big Poppy has gotten healthy. And they that certainly really helps that team. Wild card race. Oh, well, yes, they are. 2-2 pitch. Fouled away. It's a much different team for Boston without uh, David Ortiz being healthy, that's for sure. Well, Manny doesn't get pitched to. When David Ortiz is out of the lineup, they just pitch around Manny all day long. It's a lot like this Tigers team. When Sheffield's out of the lineup, they can choose to pitch around Maglio if they chose to do so. Two and two on Hideki Matsui. Lifted in the air, shallow right field, might be trouble. Granderson coming on with a sliding play, but he dropped it. The second dive, or the second time that Granderson has left his feet in the outfield tonight. One hit off the heel of the glove, and this one hit off the heel of the glove as well. 
two balls that Granderson usually catches on most nights. Ooh, you're right, right off the heel of the glove. They are tough plays, however. But Granderson has set the bar very high for, for himself out in center field this year. And he will tell you himself he probably should have caught both of them. Meanwhile, Matsui gets his third hit. Posada sends this one back toward the seats. Posada is hitless in this one. A couple of fly balls and a ground out. Talking about that Red Sox team, 35 runs in three games this weekend against the White Sox, who have just absolutely gone off the deep end. They're in last place. And with all that talent in that lineup. Fly ball center field hit well. Granderson has room on this one. Runner retreats, two gone. It's a home run in most ballparks, but not here, Jorge. <laughs> Going to bring up Robinson Cano. Cano is one for three. Singled, scored a run in that big four run sixth. Again in the air to center. Granderson under this one as well to retire the side. So they get a hit. Strand man. Time for the wall side windows. Seventh inning stretch. It's 7 2 Yanks. Ed, let me stay up until 3.30 a.m. Good for you. You saw yourself a Tigers victory last night at 3.30. Got some good parents. <laughs> That's true. Well, the Tigers are going to need to get the offense going here tonight if they want to uh, get back into this ball game. Another sellout crowd. But it's been mostly New York tonight. And for the Tigers in the bottom of the seventh inning, it'll be Ravello, Casey, and Inge. Mike 0 for 2 tonight. Ground ball, fly ball. Jin Ming Wong is helped off by a double play in the sixth. Goes back to work and it's rolled foul. First base side. Ming Wong came into this game tonight 4-0 with a 2.9 ERA and five career starts. 
against the Tigers. So for the most part, he's had their number. And he beat Detroit back on the 19th in New York, a ball game that was won 9 to 3 by the Yanks. The 2 1 pitch to Mike Ravello. And get off his foot. Two balls, two strikes. You know, really what Wong is doing tonight is nothing different than what he's been doing since June 16th. His last 19 starts, he is 13 and 3 with a 3.83 earned run average in the 13 wins. That's the most in the majors. Louisiana Lightning, Ron Guidry, the pitching coach for the Yankees. We ought to add up all the credentials of these two staffs. We've had a ton of all stars, a lot of managing experience, mm -hmm. a lot of postseason experience. And Torrey has really surrounded himself with guys that have done it at the highest level, like Mattingly as hitting coach, and of course, Ron Gidry as pitching coach. And Larry Bull, his third base coach, is a good manager. Tony Pena was manager of the year in 2003 with the Kansas City Royals. In the air to right field and caught. Bello is out, one away. And there's a wealth of experience on the Tiger side as well. A wealth of managerial experience between Leland, McClendon, Lamont. And for a couple of guys like Van Slyke and also Bell Yard that have really never been coaches before, they've done some nice work in the two years they've been here. Jeff Jones in the bullpen. Belliard handling all the infielders. Casey, I think I called uh, Mattingly the hitting coach. He is the bench coach for Joe Torre. Hitting coach last year for them. There's a strike. You have, right? Well, it's hard to keep up with these guys from year to year. 0 for 2 for Sean Casey. A couple of ground balls. Slow, one ball, one strike. Tigers got to the Rocket Man last night. He had beaten the Tigers back at Yankee Stadium on the last trip for Detroit. Didn't get a decision last night, though. Clemens, five innings. Six runs and three walks in that game. Will this be his final year? Who knows? You know, that guy's going to be around a long time, Andrew Miller. Now the one two. Casey chased. Down he goes, strike three. <laughs> The sixth strikeout. Comcast high speed pitches on the evening for Mr. Wong. 95 in the first. And he's thrown a fastball here in this inning at 95 as well. Very consistent with his low as well. Probably his changeup. He's a good pitcher. He's a real good pitcher. He's really been the glue to their staff all season long because they've had injuries to everybody else. Brandon Inch is snapped out of it a little bit tonight with a couple of hits, both singles and a stolen base. He can't solve Brandon Inch tonight. <laughs> no, he can't. At least not to this point. One ball and one strike. Inch came into this one 0 for his previous 14 at bats. We talked about the. Uh, the fact that Sheffield is not in the lineup these days. Of course, the Tigers 7 8 9 has not been as strong as it had been last year, and that's one of the big differences in this Tigers lineup. And had Craig Monroe, who was hitting with a lot of power at the bottom of the lineup last year, he's no longer in the organization. Inge has 12 home runs, but he has slumped at times this season. 
inside spins him out of there. Three and one. Two out seventh inning. Tiger is trailing at seven to two tonight. Three one pitch. Make it three and two. Told you that tomorrow it's Jurgens and Hughes, and then on Monday to close out the series, Verlander and Messina. The Tigers hit Messina pretty good the last time they faced him. He's been hit around uh, pretty good his last two times he's been out there. As a matter of fact, there was some talk about dropping him from the rotation. Right to the second baseman Cano to retire the side. Tigers go one, two, three. We will scoot to the eighth, seven, two Yanks. Seven to two to the New York Yankees and a fans visit Tigers.com now for fan appreciation savings on the Tuesday September 11th 105 game against Texas upper box field mezzanine and pavilion seats are just 10 bucks each limit of six tickets per person while supplies last this offer available only at Tigers.com. Well Jason Grilly back to work and Tigers down seven to two tonight as we go to the eighth inning. Wilson Betamid leads it off. Betamid Cabrera, then the top of the order, Johnny Damon. It was a close one until the four run sixth broke it open a little bit for the Yanks. That's going to stay fair. Yes. Rebello throws him out. Nice play. He got to it right before it went foul. Nice job by Rebello. He jumped all over it. And Betamid was a little late leaving that batter's box, but I don't think he would have been safe anyway. That ball was right on the chop when he picked it up. And a nice throw on the inside part of the bag by Ravello. Here's Melky Cabrera. He had the biggest hit of the game. The triple with the bases loaded. Knocking in three back in the sixth inning. They got a lot of production out of the seven, eight, nine hitters in that big sixth. Really missing outside 2 and 0 on Cabrera. Melky now with 57 RBIs. Put together a lengthy hitting streak back in July. 18 straight games. These Yankees have had some hitting streaks this year as you might expect with their offense clicking. In fact Derek Jeter has had streaks of 17 19 and 20 this year. Two one. Three and one. Really came out of the seventh and gave up a single with no damage. Damon on deck. Round ball knocked down by Grilly. Has time. Cabrera is out two gone. Really 
checking out the hand says he's okay. Hunter Wendelstead is also out there, the home plate umpire, to make sure he's all right. Hunter Wendelstead, by the way, is the son of Harry Wendelstead, who was a big league umpire. In fact, Hunter wears number 21. His dad wore that number as well. Here's Johnny Damon. Strike one. Damon two for four. He has tripled and homered in this game. Had a couple of hits in the opener last night as well. It's up high. One and one. Popped him up. The shortstop Santiago and a 1 2 3 inning for Grilly. Two scoreless for the Tigers right hander. Let's go to the bottom of the eighth. The Yankees are still on top of the Tigers, and we're going to make Wang our bell tire pitch by pitch. He has six strikeouts in the ball game today. He's done a marvelous job of changing the eye level of the Tigers hitters. He's gone down there with sinker balls. He's gone down there with sliders. And when he's wanted to climb the ladder, he's climbed the ladder and got a few strikeouts that way as well. Wong has pitched another masterful game for the New York Yankees. And as of this point, the Tigers have not beaten him in his career. No, and uh, he is in control again here tonight, and the Tigers are running out of time in this one. As we go to the bottom of the eighth, Santiago chops one of the shortstop Jeter. One pitch and one out. He's going to bring up the top of the order, Curtis Granderson. So Santiago is 0 for 3. Anderson likewise 0 for 3. Curtis looks at a strike. Tigers have had five hits in this game. That's uh, that's it. They had two singles from Ordonez. Inge has a couple of singles as well and a base hit from Tim. They've been scattered too. They haven't had one inning where they've had more than two hits. More than one hit I should say. And that uh, extra base spring is on the line here. 89 straight games with at least one extra base hit. But they haven't had one tonight.
2 and 1 on Curtis Granderson. 7 to 2. Yankees lead. We're in the bottom of the eighth. Granderson had the four for six night last night. Yeah, but tonight, Chin Ming Wong has been able to handle him so far. Here's the 2 2 offering. High, three balls, two strikes. There is activity in the bullpen. Luis Viscaino is warming up for New York. He pitched last night. It's inside ball four so the Tigers have a one out run. Chin Ming Wong walks Polanco back in the first he came around to score and that is only his second walk. Well Gidry is out of phone. Here's Polanco with one out. Or some way somehow have to try and string together some hits here. Belanco walked, stole a base, scored a run of the Tigers first. They fell behind 2-0 early tonight when uh, the Yankees got two against Bonderman in the first inning, but Ordonez singled in a run to make it two to one. That would be as close as the Tigers would get in this game. Swing and a miss. No balls in one strike. The Tigers run in the fifth inning tonight was an unearned run which is the first unearned run allowed by Chen Ming Wong this season. And it's also the first unearned run in his last 48 starts. Oh, they play good defense behind him. Exactly what that says. No errors, no unearned runs. He keeps them on their toes. They know they're going to get a lot of ground ball, and they're ready for him. One ball, one strike. Uh, Placido Polanco. There's some Yankees fans starting to mouth off a little bit now. Rather quiet at 3:30 in the morning, though. Oh, some smack talk going on right now. <laughs> the Tigers fans seem to be uh, holding his own right back to the mound. There's one. Here comes the relay. There's two. It's a double play. Another twin killing. Turn by one. We'll go to the ninth. Seven to two Yankees.
is our game summary presented by the Michigan Regional Council of Carpenters and Millwrights with the Yankees up seven to two. Brandon Inge two for three tonight with a couple of singles and a run scored. The big hit though off the bat of Melky Cabrera three run triple in the sixth and the Tigers bullpen in the series has not been scored upon in nine innings so far. We'll try and keep that intact as we go to the ninth inning with the Yankees up seven to two. It's Derek Jeter leading it off. Jason Grilly is out for his third inning, two scoreless innings so far for Grilly. Jeter is 0 for 4. Swing and a miss. Fastball in one ball and one strike. We have an update from Kansas City and it's not good. Cleveland pounding on the Royals tonight top of the ninth inning eight to two and if these two scores hold up it's back to a two and a half game spread for Cleveland. One one pitch. On the ground and again really fielding his position he's had a couple of comebackers tonight. A lot of balls hit right back up the middle tonight. Uh, several hit right back at Bonderman. Several hit at Wong. And you've already mentioned a couple hit right at Grilly. He got all in Jeter's kitchen right there. Well there you go the Tigers right now a game and a half behind the Indians. The Mariners leading the Yankees. Who I think right now have to realistically just look at the wild card for their opportunity. And there's still plenty of time for Detroit. They just have got to right the ship and start to play a little bit more consistent baseball, better baseball. Run off a few in a row is what they need to do, which is obviously easier said than done, but they do have that kind of talent down there in their dugout, and I know they believe that as well. Tigers, I think, would like to just start winning some series. They have not been able to do that in a long time. We keep talking about one of those dramatic wins as they had last night as jump starting the ball club. Uh, but when they come back out today and not necessarily look flat because I don't really buy into that. Starting pitching on the other side at times makes the offense look flat, and I think that's what has happened tonight. Well, they had that two to one win over the Indians that many thought might spur the team on. And then Cleveland would go on to take two out of three in that series. And of course, the huge win last night in the bottom of the 11th. But tonight, the Yankees taking it to Detroit, seven to two. It's been a much more challenging season this year. Yeah, but at the end of the day, and they're still just one in a game, one half, one and a half games out of first place. With a lot of games to play. Bunch we assume will be back in there tomorrow. Breo has been on base three times, a couple of walks and a single. And a strike call. He was on base uh, in New York in that four game series with regularity as well. Got a good eye. Walks a hundred times a year. Scores a lot of runs. He's a good baseball player. And they've been able to put him in many different spots in their lineup. He has hit in six different spots in Joe Torrey's lineup this year. He can run, he can hit for power, he can drive in runs. I think this may be their best lineup, though. They go lefty, righty, lefty, righty, lefty. Posada's a switch hitter, then they got Cano going left handed. So tori has got a nice lineup and it's tough to match up against his lineup late in games as far as bringing in people out of your bullpen. Fought that one off. That's why he's a good hitter. To foul that ball off. Another one that'll go back into the seats. Amongst the sellout crowd here tonight at Comerica. Cool 
Yet another sellout for Detroit. Of course, you expected that with the Yankees in town. But even without the marquee names, the Tigers have been getting sellouts by the bunches this year. Standing room only. They've got them jack jam packed into every part of this ballpark. There's another base hit for Bobby Abreu. He's going to take the turn, a wide turn, and scamper back. He was hustling out of the batter's box. He was smelling double on that. If Tims wouldn't have got to that ball in a timely manner, then Bobby Abreu would have challenged him and ran to second. So here's A-Rod. Well, who wants A-Rod when they have M-Rod? I think they'd rather have, I think they'd rather have A-Rod. I hope so. <laughs> we don't cost as much, that's for sure. Speak for yourself now. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I've seen the car you drive. <laughs> You're up in that stratosphere. <laughs> One for three for A-Rod tonight. Very creative sign. Some good artwork as well. Two balls, no strikes on Alex Rodriguez. I did notice when we were in the Bronx uh, last week, I didn't hear A-Rod get booed one time in that four-game series. No, nope, not nary a boo, not even one. In the first couple of years, if he had a home run, they might boo him. <laughs> that's line foul. I think uh, they used up all of their boos for Gary Sheffield's at bats. Well, that's true. But also, they want A-Rod back. And, of course, he could opt out of his... Uh, Deal at the end of this year. How about that happy oh thing? My goodness. Go, girl. <laughs> Apparently, that's the first foul ball this guy's ever gotten. But that was a good play. I thought maybe she caught it. Uh oh, there she goes. <laughs> Take the glasses off. <laughs> Do it again, she said. Hey, big man. He big him. He big man on <laughs> campus now. Three and one. He did it so cool, calm, and collected. Just threw his glove up. Yes, you're on TV, ma'am. <laughs> Smile for us. <laughs> there goes the runner, swinging a miss. Throw down is not in time. A steal for Abreu. I don't know about that steal now. Seven to two. Ninth inning. That's his third one, but that's kind of rubbing it in. I mean, that's kind of that gray area where you're rubbing it in. Five run lead in the ninth. Yeah, it's real close, isn't it? That's a, it's, it's borderline. Right, it's right there. It is borderline, but I don't know. Many argue, or many managers will argue, how much is enough? Five in the last inning. You can make the argument that it is. With Mariano Rivera in the bullpen. Yeah, good point. But I think they've taken offense too to some of them high and tight fastballs that have been have been thrown at them all day long today. There's a walk. So there's two sides to every story. Well, and that's a good point because there have been quite a few here this evening. And they didn't say nothing about them. They just kept on hitting. Meanwhile, Mr. Chamberlain is beginning to heat up the hard throwing Java Chamberlain with that zero ERA. So two men on Yankees threatening to add to their seven to two lead. We've had ten hits tonight New York. And the dangerous Hideki Matsui who has three hits two RBIs. Ball one. Starting him off with a change up. I've noticed Grilly lately starting to use a few more pitches uh, in his arsenal. He was a starter by trade before last year going into the bullpen, so he had to change up breaking ball, fastball, instead of just going to all his hard stuff, a few change ups here and there. Get some hitters off balance. In the last six games, that uh, seven games, I should say, the Braves played against the Tigers. He is 12 for 26 with two home runs and seven RBIs. Wow. 
And some stolen bases too. Three today. Two and oh. Tigers have been out hit in this game 10 5. The 2 0 pitch. Strike call 2 and 1. Matsui got the Yankees on the board early with that two out, two run double in the first off Bonderman. He's hit safely now in 44 of his last 48. It's been quite a tear for Matsui. Way inside, and now the count goes to three and one, and he's one pitch away from loading these bases. Well, he's got to throw this one right down the middle and hope that uh, Matsui hits it at somebody. He did, and it's in the air to shallow center. Granderson hauls it in, and the runners retreat. Two outs. So he disposes of Matsui, and that's going to bring up Jorge Posada. Tigers in the bottom of the ninth are going to have their three, four, and five hitters, Thames, Ordonez, and Guillen. They have kept Posada hitless tonight. He has caught one whale of a game, though. Very underrated player in this lineup that features a lot of superstars for New York. There's going to be a lot of people to come after him after this season is over. Their pockets may not be as deep as Mr. Steinbrenner's, but there are going to be some people that are going to be looking uh, to upgrade at the catching position. And it's not often a switch hitting catcher that hits 330 is on the market. And also a guy that's never been on the disabled list at that position. Georgia never let it happen. Inside and high, two balls and no strikes. And Jorge has said that he does not want to play anywhere else. Posada having a terrific year in his final year of the contract. He's 36 years old. He came up through the Yankees organization and has been here his entire career. A strike called. He went around two and one. He's been in the big leagues since 1995. That's about the time Jeter arrived. Yeah. Mariano Rivera arrived about the same time. So when they started winning, they started building from within. Went out and got some good veterans. Paul O'Neill, Scott Brocious to fill in some spots. One time in his career, he knocked in over 100, and that was a few years back. That would have been the 03 campaign for Posada. But every other year he's been 70, 80, 90 in that range. Very consistent. He's starting to bring up some young players again as they did with Jeter and Posada, Mariano, Robertson Cano, Melky Cabrera, Big Jabba Chamberlain, Phil Hughes will get the ball tomorrow. They're doing it a little differently these days. Rip to center field. Granderson is there, and that is that. So Grilly goes three scoreless, single a walk, they'll strand two. Last chance coming up for the Tigers.
The Yankees in the lead in this one and the Tigers down to their final swings now they need to get the offense going extremely quickly here. There's a new pitcher. This pitching change brought to you by the back and neck pain specialist a dynamic rehabilitation. And his name is Brian Bruni. He's been used quite often this year 51st time that uh, he has been in the ball game. Didn't he just get recalled again as well. I believe you are correct. Yeah. So they must have wore him out before they sent him out. <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> like every night. Jeez. He was recalled prior to Friday's game. He couldn't pick his arm up. <laughs> 50 appearances and he's already been to the bushes too. Oh my goodness. That is a lot. Well, here's Thames. It's going to be Thames, Ordonez, and Guillen facing Bruni. Marcus one for three tonight. Swings on the first pitch and hits it a mile high into the air, deep in left field. It's carrying not far enough. Johnny Damon runs it down. Got underneath it just a hair. Or he'd have hit that ball back up there by that Willie Horton statue. It was headed in that direction. So Thames is out one gone for Maglio Ordonez. Bags two for three. Raising its average to 359 right now. Xin Ming Wang goes eight innings and gives way to Bruni. Swing and a miss. Hughes in Jurgens tomorrow for game three. Day game here tomorrow. Tigers pitching tonight failed to pick up at least one strikeout, which is really, really odd. Last time they won an entire game without striking out at least one batter last May mm. against Minnesota. Wow. And when you have a game that started by Bonderman, you don't figure that's going to be part of the equation. Here's the 2 2. Just off the plate. 3 and 2 on Ordonez. Jair Jurgens makes the start tomorrow. Battle of prospects. Puka shields and all. He doesn't wear those when he pitches, does he? No, he doesn't. Shallow right field. The Preyu. Two outs. Now let's see. Head to head this series, the heavyweight battle between two MVP candidates. It's like Mags has gotten the better of it so far. That's updated through tonight. Mm -hmm. They've walked A-Rod three times today. Or twice, I should say. Ron Gidry getting some face time now. I guess Bruni has got some issues. Bruni doesn't seem to think so. They brought the trainer out with him. Check on it. Two outs, nobody on, and it's going to be up to Carlos Guillen. Carlos hitless tonight, 0 for 3. Tigers down to their final out. They've been out hit tonight 10 5 by the Yanks. Bruni's got it pretty good arm. They got some guys in their bullpen. Every last one of them's 95 and above. Every last one of them. Yeah, Chamberlain gets to triple digits. You got some guys out there that can throw that little bitty peel up there. That's a little bit low. 2 and 0. Oh. It's a nice luxury to have.
Popped him up. Should do it. Derek Jeter is under it. And the Yankees win game two in the series. In the ninth inning, the Tigers go one, two, three. Joe Torre's bunch comes in, takes a seven to two win. We'll be back with more from Comerica Park in a moment.